Hi everyone, nice to see you. Don't worry, it's not just me. There will eventually be a Ryan and Bethany joining me on this stream. It's just we were literally 30 seconds away from starting and then their computer shut down. So they they are signed back on. They will be back any second now. So I'm just waiting for them to come back and they will join the stream and I will add them in as and when. But hopefully there won't be any more technical issues because even though it's uh, snowy and freezing where they are, they are not, say, in Texas where they haven't got the infrastructure. So hopefully we shouldn't get any technical difficulties. But yes, if you're in the chat, then by all means, just get some comments down, start flooding it. Nice to see you, uh, Jen, as <laughs> always a uh, first and a regular. But just to kind of explain briefly what is going on once they do get here actually oh hang on we might just have got them so hello <laughs> welcome back <laughs> <laughs> yes oh, i've already explained yes the minor technical difficulty there literally 30 seconds before the stream yeah. was about to start so <laughs> we're all good that, that did have me worried there for a second i thought <laughs> you've got to be kidding me <laughs> we like started, we, like, started, started to talk, talk and everything, and everything went Blank, blank. Yes, I, I did not need that heart attack 30 <laughs> seconds before the stream. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be like, well, you're going to get my top 10 and we'll just have to like yeah. post the other one. I don't know. But, we're, all, uh, we're all awake, we're all awake now, now, though. The, the shocker that, that like, just, yeah. really woke us up. True, I needed that. Yeah, because bear in <laughs> mind, it is, uh, for those of you over there, what's it now? Uh, 4.30, something like that? We are 3.30 3 in, in Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, you're free for in the afternoon. It's 9.30 in the evening here, which is usually fine for me. It's just been a, a long bit of the day. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if we've got any Europeans in the chat to see if they're even worse. Because if they're any closer to the east, they'll be even more hours ahead. So they'll be doing like a late <laughs> night bit. A uh, tiny bit of echo from Bethany, apparently, according to Jen. But I, I haven't noticed anything that bad. Not to my knowledge, but see how that goes anyway. Uh, but yes, this is a top 10 two-player only games, and uh, I've been asked to do this list for a while. I mean, I did one a long time ago, but uh, and I have done a top 10 multiplayer games for two about a year and a bit ago. But it needed an update, but there's one problem I have with two-player games. I live alone. <laughs> small violin time it's difficult for me to get two players to the table unless it's at a club where i can get one person round, which was easier to do at the start of covid than it is now when we're in lockdown so it i uh, sort of went through the top 10 and i'm thinking like oh yes i can get a 10 together but this feels a little bit cult of the old as opposed to some newer titles <laughs> and i don't know if i'm the best person to speak on it i'm probably better with solo and multiplayer so that's why i've enlisted ryan and bethany here to help <laughs> Because two players, their thing, <laughs> at least for obvious reasons. <laughs> now, with you two, is it just you two, or do you? You've got two daughters, haven't you? So, yes. yeah, yeah, so yeah, do you have yeah. do you have like time when it's like like mother and daughter, father and daughter, like two player times? Are they too young for that? Yeah, our seven year old definitely yeah. plays some games with us. And the kids' games have gotten so much better now over the years too. It feels like uh, for a long time they were just really simple games, roll and moves, that kind of thing. And really, they've become really engaging children's games that are enjoyable for kids and Yeah, our yeah, three year old to play games, to play games about, about every day, day maybe? maybe? Yeah. yeah, but those are really <laughs> that'll be interesting to see though. Because I mean, I know you've done this list about four or five months ago. I purposely did not watch that list because I didn't want to get like guessing, I wanted to sort of get surprised. I'm curious if there's going to be some kiddie games on your list, which, which will be handy because there'll be none on mine. <laughs> so, for, so it's kind of like, look, you're going to get probably a better list from them than you are me, I suspect, unless you're into some of the cult of the old games, in which case you probably will get some off me. But here we go, Lydian, Jen, Dan, Eric, Nishad, and and Jonah, One Pit Wonder is having to come in as well. They've mentioned an echo. I'm not noticing an echo, to be honest. I mean, let us know if it's uh, distracting, guys. But I don't. I'm not noticing anything particularly bad from Ryan and Bethany. Just speak a bit more. What can we do? Twice echo thing. Should be fine. I mean, if you go into your audio settings, there is something for echo cancellation that you can turn off. It might have defaulted to on for you because I have that. Or, or you might be able to turn it on. I don't know. I mean, I have to use a mic with no echo cancellation because of this mic. But for you, you might need to switch it on. It looks like it is. Uh, try turning it off. Yeah. Yeah. 
Does it sound Does any, it sound any better, better, now? better now? That sounds perfect to me. Uh, we'll see if the chat says on that. The thing is, echo. <laughs> The thing is, the echo cancellation kind of cancels out a bit of the noise and it interrupts your chat. Like, if you listen to the board game ramblings one, I forgot to turn it off, and you can definitely tell my mic has that problem. With a dynamic mic, I need it off, otherwise, it just will not work. With yours, tiny little bit of background noise just because it's a USB mic, but barely anything audible. But still echo, still echo. I'm not hearing it from them. Hmm. That is odd. Have a little fiddle around, but. Is it better? Is it better? Ah, no. That was echo and feedback. Okay, world's back. We're good. And I'll speak a bit. I honestly am not hearing any echo from their side. Not after the dish corrected that, so we'll have to uh, see how things go. If they're playing their sound through their headphones, they should turn down their speakers so the speaker doesn't go through the microphone. But they should be fine. I mean, their microphone is a USB mic, presumably, and they've got headsets on. So yeah, it yeah. should be okay. I don't know. I don't know. Is that better or worse? Well, for me, it's no different. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think it's only worse. You're we'll like, you mean, the, you mean same? the same? It's the same. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same for me, but then it's been flawless at this point. You know, I don't hear an echo from your side, so... And that's coming through my laptop. Ah, wait a minute. I wonder if that's it. No, if it's coming through my laptop speakers, but then that shouldn't be picking up at all. <laughs> it says they have echo, so it wouldn't be mine. And even then, this is a dynamic. It won't be picking up the laptop at all. Oh I, I keep wondering what, what we can, we can do, do, but then not realizing we also, also need to talk, talk so, so if we, we do something... something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's anything to do on the fly right now. I say we get to the list. Yeah, that's probably it. Um, I mean, you had echo cancellation. Let's, let's turn on echo cancellation for you and see what happens. Speak a bit. Testing, testing. A one, two, a one, and, a two and a three. Look, it's Look, my it's Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day mug. mug. There's, a, There's heart. a heart. Look, <laughs> see? It's, it's, it's the, the handle. handle. How great, How is, great that? is that? I don't get any of that. I say, well, I've turned on echo cancellation on their mic because apparently I can adjust it from my end, which is kind of weird. So we'll see. Mike, cut out. You just have to speak clearly into the mic so it doesn't cut out normally. But hopefully, we and we'll just have to tweak it. But if we don't get to the list, we never will. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be too bad. I'll be interested to uh, sort of listen to it back when this is all done, though, and see what happens. But I'm not noticing a problem on my end. So, yes, like I said, top 10 two-player only games. The only caveats on my side being that there, if the game was primarily designed for two-player, but it has a solo mode, I've allowed one game for that. Otherwise, I would have a problem with that. And I swear there was one other... Oh yes, I've excluded anything that requires too much of an investment. So as much as I like Netrunner and Magic the Gathering, you got to get the cards, you got to keep buying the packs, you got to keep up with it. It's not something you can really just pick up and play. So I haven't bothered with those. But apart from that, it's pretty much fair game. Anything yeah, similar yeah. from your end? The only the caveat, caveat we did is that it had, it had to be designed, designed as two-player, two player, not, not plays two-player two well. well. And we did and make we did this list individually, individually, like you said, maybe four months, months ago, ago, where it was Ryan's, Ryan's list and Beth's list. 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 But this one, we this made one just made one list of the top ten games we could play together. We really tested our marriage while we were making this list. Yeah. I say I will not be held responsible for marriage breakups on this list. Of that, I <laughs> right, see so the broken meeple bringing f couples together. That's not really, I think, the slogan I'll be going with. So, no John Wheeler, I'm afraid. No Grand Austria Hotel on the basis that we are not doing multiplayer games best with two, because that would be a perfect example. But I did do a list about a year and a half back. So, if you search on a channel, there should be stuff from there. Even though probably Grand Austria Hotel isn't even on that list, but still, <laughs> so, know that nobody's mentioned Echoes. So hopefully, we're good, but. Uh, like I say, we'll just have to see. So, if I can find <laughs> the bits I need, we'll get started. Hey, it took me an hour to make those things. I'm going to use them. All right. <laughs> and as always, guests go first. So, why don't you kick us off? 
All right, so our number 10, this is a game called Crimson Company. Uh, basically, it's a dueling game uh, where you get um, the best two out of three of these three different uh, castle cards. Uh, and you play them with a lot of different interactive card play, like you're trying to get a majority in that particular column, uh, but you might be able to flip cards upside down, move things around. Uh, basically, it's kind of, is this just a dueling card game? Yeah, and all of the cards are different, um, so they all have different text on them. Um, they can all do different things. There's not a single duplicate amongst all the cards. Is this the right thing I'm looking at here? Yes. Yeah, this is the collector's uh, version, which is not our version, but it is the same game, basically. Then I won the four. So you can play this with other players, can you? It was, it was presented as a two player, two player only. only. Yes. It, it was it was yeah, ours, yeah, is, ours a two is a two player. player. It could be one of those things where a bit like yeah, where it's like you should really play it with two, but if you get like multiple sets or something you can play it with Maybe. four, it's probably Maybe. not probably Maybe. not Maybe. recommended. Maybe. Only have yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Alright, so it's gonna be one of those things where you like you combine it or something ridiculous. That's fine, but I've never even heard of this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a 2020 <laughs> release. It's, it's fairly new. For Pretty new. Well, with that, taking on the roles of adventurous noblemen in the cutthroat fantasy world. Most of the images are all about miniatures, though. I mean, uh, that one's a little bit different. So you got little cards. All right. I'm yeah. curious if anybody else has heard of this one, because I'm like, hmm? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine, I imagine that's going to happen, happen a lot, a lot on it. Well, that's probably the newest one. I say a few people have mentioned the Echo Fiend. I'm going to try one last thing. I don't think it's this, but we'll go with it. It's 100% something on our end. But I don't know what, because I did all the things. Yeah, but it's worth a try, so. Mm -hmm. Right. So I get stuff to appear out of my headphones, then. Right, okay. So now everything's going to come out of my headphones, so we shall see. Uh, See if that has any help on on that. But okay, oh. fine. Well, I mean, I can hear, I can hear you in mine now, so we'll certainly see if that's uh, improved. Seeing on that front, and yep, sorry for the uh, sluggish start, everyone, but we'll <laughs> certainly be back on track. Okay, well, like I say, I'll see if I get on with my number ten, and we'll go from there. So my number ten going. To Good few years back, about 2015, this involved asymmetric sides uh, fighting against each other, different objectives. Uh, one side playing scientists and the other side playing a nice, cute, lovable raptor. Yeah, <laughs> good, lovable velociraptor, because I love velociraptors. They're easily my favorite dinosaur. But this, <laughs> I do love them. But this one there, I. Great little one, Bruno Cafala and uh, Bruno Faduti. So you've got like pretty cool designer there and like one of the more crazy designers out there. Is like anything Faduti touches has usually got some craziness to it. But I love the card play in this. The scientists want to, uh, you know, capture the baby raptors to experiment, shall we say, on them. But then Mother Raptor just wants to protect the babies and get them out. Whether that involves evacuating the babies or eating the scientists is entirely down to you. But I prefer to eat the scientists. <laughs> But with this, it's the great card play with these where everybody's got their set of cards one to nine. And it's that classic play your cards and then play a single card to get them all back in your hand. Except the, the thing with this, you've only got three in your hand at a time. And you play a card, whoever simultaneously with the other player, whoever plays the lowest number gets the action of the card. But whoever plays the higher number gets the difference in action points to do various things. So there's a lot of getting in each other's head. While at the same time, you're essentially moving your raptor and scientists around on this like tile map that's slightly different every game, trying to maneuver the scientists. They're trying to sort of like tranquilize the raptor. Raptor babies are trying to do the mother raptor can zoom along and eat scientists. It's thematically pretty sound <laughs> for what it is. It's basically the Jurassic Park prequel. 
I actually haven't heard an anecdote about this game that uh, Fuduti actually designed it as a like a Lord of the Rings game originally. Like the Hobbit. Like, yeah, the <laughs> Hobbit. And, uh, and then it was read that was like for a contest, and then he didn't win the contest, so he rethemed it and made Raptor. <laughs> Uh, it was Luke's fault all around, as expected. Echo freed now. Okay, fair enough. Fair... I was thinking the plane for you. I was convinced it was us. <laughs> I was convinced it wasn't because I don't. I didn't have to wear headphones last time. But uh, it's a dynamic mic, which means it should only be picking up literally this in front of me. So I'm surprised it picked up the laptop. But uh, apologies if that's the case so no, note to self wear headset every time so yeah echo is gone sounds great yeah everybody's uh now <laughs> going on that. oh so with that curious nobody's mentioned anything on the crimson company mainly just because i don't think anybody else has heard of it or so. you're welcome <laughs> but uh there's definitely some love some human eating dinosaurs and hello to Chewy and Sean and John, who's come in. Hello from Sweden. First time on any chat watching for any. I mean, looking forward to this list. And the echo is gone. Yes, I get it. The echo is gone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Even Jonah's happy. Right. Fine. I and uh, I accept responsibility for that one. You know, it's all good. But yep, that's number ten. Raptor mother eating lovable dinosaurs. As I say, nothing gory in it. It's all just fun and games. But. Uh, Certainly, if I'm playing this, I want to play the raptor because, well, it's a velociraptor and I get to eat people. That's fun. <laughs> Who would, our daughter would probably love eating people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I could see that. That could be worrying. We'll have to see. All right, moving on to nine. So our number... I was gonna say we weren't done yet. <laughs> yeah. I'm so used to like just not having anything fun I that, yeah. and just talking, <laughs> not it, having anything that looks nice, or just like going with it. <laughs> it. It would be easier, but I keep doing this to myself, where I think, why don't I just do it not easy like everyone else does? It's like, no, I've got to have something flashy. It's like but I do it, this to myself. It looks, great. it looks a lot better <laughs> yes. than yeah. I'm not... Anyway, so um, our number nine is. Lord of the Rings, the confrontation. This is like the Stratego one, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Stratego. It's, it, you know, not, I won't say knockoff, but it's it's got, basically it has the same mechanisms as Stratego where people are facing, your your characters are facing you, their characters are facing them. Uh, and each one has a different, different wind conditions, asynchronous as far as the wind condition goes. Um, you know, but you can reveal each other if... Uh, yeah, you don't know who is moving. Exactly, which here, character. You know? yeah. uh, so as you go move on, um, you touch each other, you know, you put, get the same square, the same tile, and then at that point, then you reveal and see who it is. You yeah. maybe kill each other, maybe some other effects take place. And because all the characters have different abilities that they're able to do, but you don't know who is coming at you or what they're doing. Exactly. Yep. I've still never actually played this one, despite being a Lord of the Rings fan. Again, it's that two-player thing of I just can't get these to the table to justify them. But, I mean, you give me anything with Lord of the Rings printed on it, I'm going to want to try it. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Not to mention, like, when it comes... That. Not to mention, it's made by Cosmos, which pretty much says you're going to probably like this two-player game exactly. <laughs> whenever it's them. Yeah. Their line is solid. Um, I'm trying to think, is it... There's a bunch of other ones. I've heard things like The Search and The Bridge and a few of these other ones which are regarded as horrible or something. Have you tried any of those others? So the one that has The Bridge, I think it's called The Duel, at least our, our copy is, and mm. it is... We enjoy it, but we also have this discussion while we're making our list. Yeah. Uh, if it wasn't Lord of the Rings, we probably wouldn't probably ever play it again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it is not a great game as far as the dueling card play. Yeah, we felt like it has like a shelf life in terms of you're going to play it a couple times and you explore the whole game and that's it. Yeah. That one is the the duel, right? Yeah, that one's the duel with that, that, that bridge. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? The, there was like the search, I think was one. I've heard we'll bad things that about one. that. Is it? That's what I've kind of heard anyway. Fair enough, but I've never played it, but I mean, Stratego, I think I've played Stratego once, like the proper version. I remember just losing badly at it. That was about it. I think it was Essen. I think they had like a bunch of those old abstract games like Mayon and stuff, and I think Stratego was in there, tried it, enjoyed it, but obviously the person playing it knew a damn sight more about what they were doing than I did. So, <laughs> so it's just yeah. like, 
strategy this is not going well but <laughs> i can see why everybody likes it and how like after several plays you could become like a stratego master and just have no problem with it whatsoever yeah right i like how you have like you know frodo has the ring and he's trying to get into to, to mordor but you don't know which one's frodo because they're all the backs are to the other player and so you have usually some kind of some kind of ruse going mm -hmm. on and uh it's i was fine I like the asynchronous part of that there was out. Okay, my number nine is a weird one because I don't own it anymore, only because this is one that not only do you need to get to the table with just two of you, you need a really specific person, I think, to play this one two player. But it's one of the most innovative games I've ever seen. I think it is really good fun if you are willing to accept that you need to role play it a bit and particularly if you play this with your significant other, it could be, uh, shall we say, contentious. Fog of love. <laughs> Fog of love. <laughs> this one was... I've I've not played this... W actually, did I? I might have played it with the next girlfriend once or something, but um, and no, that's not the reason they're next. <laughs> but the... Was it the... Wing with this, I've played this with like just some mates or something for a laugh, and I love the design of this. The idea that it's kind of like a kind of cooperative slash semi co op, it kind of depends what scenario you're doing, looks absolutely gorgeous for something that I'm not even sure was even a Kickstarter. It might have been, but don't quote me on that. Somebody else will have in the comments will have to sort on that. But the idea that you start off as like before you're even dating, and then you play these big cards that have like story drama, you know, something like that. And it could be anything from like, you go off to lunch, you know, to really s slightly more tenuous things. Like you're thinking of having kids or, uh, you know, you, you suspect you was it you catch some message on a mobile phone. What do you do in that? And each of you plays like a reaction simultaneously in secret, like, you know, A, B, C or D, how would you react? And based on what happens, you're, characteristics increase and you try and fulfill trait cards and, that. and it's all about developing the relationship but it doesn't necessarily always have a happy ending which might not be a bad thing for the game if you're trying to score well in that but you know you might not be compatible dates <laughs> it just might happen to be so the theme can certainly i think trigger a few people but even though i don't own the game it's just purely because i don't think i'd ever get it to the table again but i just loved how much i could role play the theme of this like crazy because i didn't have anything to worry about baggage wise it's just like <laughs> mate we're two grown men we are playing this game and we're just gonna have fun and the idea that you know my friends there playing your typical businessman or saying and i'm playing a like a goth rocker you know like girl or something just sort of having to go at him saying say like, look you're just not seeing my needs you know it's just like, it's like, <laughs> I'm yeah, fragile. I need hugs. You know, and it just you just get you can go completely ham with this, and I <laughs> love it to bits. But as I say, just one of those ones that you really do need specific people to play with, which is why it's not quite high up on the list. We played it all the way through, along with all the expansions too, um, and I personally loved it. Yeah, Ryan loved it. Ryan loved it. <laughs> not so not much. so much. I was not. I was not a fan. And I think a lot of what you're saying is, is true. I just was never in a good, the appropriate mood to play this game. You really do have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Coming with the right attitude and be able to role yeah. play yeah. and have a lot of fun with it that way. I mean, Ryan was able to play with one of our friends <coughs> and they just had a hoot. Like he was talking the, the night after he had played it, he was telling me their whole romantic love story of everything that had happened and like <laughs> all the fights and things that went on. And it was just like, he, it was, they loved it. it. Was fantastic. <laughs> And even when we were playing as the two of us, you never ever want to play this as as, you. as Ryan and as Bethany. Nah. You have to be very clearly, yeah. you know, we'd mix up the genders and stuff just so it was very clear that, you know, this is not our relationship playing out. This is mm. yeah. the character's relationship playing out. Yeah, which is why I could understand like the feed could trigger a few people. Like, I mean, when I did play it with an ex girlfriend before, I was like, okay, this better not go <laughs> south. And no, it did. I mean, she wasn't that into games anyway, so it didn't matter. But it's just, yeah, I wouldn't want to try and copy it. But if you play it with just two people who either don't know each other or I guess do, but just as mates or something, it, yeah. it can lead to some good laughs. But, you know, yep. I mean, this, the base set will just do like, you know, you're meeting for a date, so it's more like the Tinder stage and then like possibly getting into a relationship, meet the parents. But then the future expansions go into like old age and all sorts of other different parts of your life. And it's like, cool, blimey, it's really getting into detail. 
I'd love to try it more, but yeah, I, I can't see this one. I mean, I, I need a girlfriend who's into games, who's willing to try this out. That's the only way it's ever going to like hit <laughs> the table in front of me again, I suspect. Yeah. But, ah, well, can't be helped. Right, moving on to eight. I like trying to pick out all the different game pieces you have in the background are. <laughs> that's what that's what I do it for the comments. Yeah, like, they they've got to look at the intro more detail though. The uh, uh, the, the the retro one you would have missed it because I think you were still logging back on. But the '80s retro intro I've got has okay. a few hidden uh, Easter eggs in there. So I'm curious how many people spot. But <laughs> all right, so our number eight is a two player version of a bigger game. This is Agricola, all creatures, big and small. I personally am a huge fan of Agricola, so, and Bethany isn't. Not at all. Not one little bit. It is, like it's a holiday game. Yeah. It's your birthday range. Yeah, I'll play that game with you. That's it. But this game we can play any day of the year <laughs> because yeah. we both like it. Uh, it's a worker placement game, and it's really just distilled down all the, the parts about Agricola that, that are a little more, you know, there's no feeding of your people, that kind of yeah. thing. There's re there's no stress, really. It's just all about the, the animal breeding, the animal husbandry, trying to get as many animals as possible. There's four different animals in the game. Um, and they fit in these different, you know, pastures and different rooms that you kind of build as it goes on. Um, and I think this is, you know, as far as a two-player distilled version of a, of a much bigger game, they did a great job. Uh, oh, yeah. This is Uwe Rose, Rosenberg. Uh, and uh, It really does kind of feel like a snack-sized version of Agricola. Like, you still get a lot of that same feelings, but just in a really, not necessarily watered down, but just in a smaller package for it. Oh, but that it, it's definitely a go. In fact, slightly ashamed actually, because I was starting to come up with a list and I thought, I need to think of 10 2 player games I had. I forgot that I've actually got it on my shelf <laughs> and I totally forgot about it. And I think that would have easily made my 10 or 9. But I have not played this in ages though, because I think I bought this a long, long time ago. And then with like the last girlfriend I had, then that ended. And then I don't think I've ever obviously not taken it to a game night. And if people have come round, we've played Caverna, like the bigger ones. Yeah. So I don't, it just hasn't hit the table, but it will still stay on my shelf because it's the big box edition, like the new one. And I do agree. This is this is my Agricola. You know, I love I love Caverna and another one, but you know, Agricola, the big version, I found too too tight, too restrictive. Not to mention quite punishing. Like you you didn't get the yes. family kids goodbye. Somebody nicked your last yes. bit of wood, you starved to death or something, and then at the end of the game... He's only speaking yeah. to Bruce, only listen to him right now. It doesn't matter <laughs> that Ryan likes that. Nah, I mean, I give Agricola respect, though, because I say it's. I understand that it's not bad design, it's just what it does is not for me, in terms of, like, I don't like the idea that if you don't f get a bit of everything, you lose a lot of negative points and that, and that, that's just me. That's why Caverna hit home more. You know, like uh, because I like the idea that I can, if I just want to do nothing but farm cows, I can. You know, if I want to just do this, I can. Whereas Agricola, I couldn't. But this two-player little version is kind of like, oh right, it takes out those bits and just gives me a nice forty-five-minute farming game, and I do yeah. like the farming games as much have as you uh, the, the Caverna uh, Cave versus Cave, the two-player version of that. I have that one. I wasn't particularly. Uh, but I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was meh. It it was about as meh as you could get for that definition. Okay. <laughs> so okay. It, it, I mean, you do a little bit of what's in Gavarda, but not much. You track your resources by like putting a token on a track and moving it up and down, and that's like several of them. That gets really annoying, <laughs> like fiddly doing it. It like I say, it wasn't bad. I just figured, why would I play this over two player big Gavarda? That's what it yeah. seemed like. <laughs> Uh, but we definitely got some love there, so they love it with all the expansions. Uh, they'll, <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible at Agricola, <laughs> but you're going to get some fans for that. I think that uh, goes without too. saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, it's John. What's up, John? Yeah, is it? Yeah, and hello, John. Uh, Agricola is a special occasions only game. <laughs> what kind yes. of special occasion? <laughs> Birthdays uh, and anniversaries. <laughs> of that and what have you missed just me causing echo cancellation without realizing it that's all you missed <laughs> um fields of earl you forget the fields of all uh yeah begins with an a but fields of earl would be an interesting one actually <laughs> but uh yes yeah, all you missed was some echo and i think our tens and uh what say we're on eights now aren't we so <laughs> not too bad okie doke 
Am I myself? So we're going on to abstract games now with my number eight. And I do, these tend to be some of my more favorite two player games. The whole idea of like, right, this is going to take me two seconds to teach you, but we're going to have a lot of fun trying to figure out the strategies for this one. This one, I think when I have taught it at our local dice cafe, they used to do events before they set up and they always got, because I knew them as friends, they turned up to my club and that I helped out teach games. So I usually brought this one along. I could teach anybody this in about 30 seconds because there's about 30 seconds worth of rules in this game. But yeah, I cannot deny that even though it's only got 30 seconds of rules, Kamasado does a great job of giving me a fun abstract experience. And literally, this is all you need to know. You've got a pillars at your side. They're on different color squares. Objective, get one of your pillars to the opposite side of the board. You choose a pillar to move, but whatever color square you land on is the color of the pillar your opponent must move. And they can only go forwards, straight or diagonal. And so it's this constant back and forth of, I move this pink one to the orange circle here, and then you have to move your orange pillar, you decide to move it to this pink one here. I move my pink to the brown, you move your brown, and you're trying to get your pillars in each other's way, but leave yourself an opening, but of course your opponent's going to be doing the exact same fate. So simple in its rules. But man, is this tense. Because a lot of games you play, you might think, oh, you drew a lucky card, or you rolled the die, it came up what you needed. Or say. In Kamasado, if you lose, it's because you gave your opponent the move they needed to beat you. So you have no one to blame but yourself. <laughs> and that just makes it even more tense. But I love it, because it looks cool. These are solid... Uh, close-up picture there that is the pillars that you get you know they're chunky felt covering you just imagine you've got like eight of those on your side eight to ten of them on this big color board it's about as simple as you can get but it doesn't get a whole amount of attention or not a lot of people are aware of it i mean most of the comments are saying not heard of this one never seen it <laughs> say no one's seen it it's like they go it's interesting but you know that's about as far as it goes and you could get it pretty cheap but if abstract games are your thing then you'd be missing out if you don't go for this one how's it sound to you too because i'm betting you've never heard of it either i saw someone someone taught it to me at a game night years ago and uh, i watched two people play and i thought it looked fantastic i never played it myself but um it was, like you said it was immediately easy to pick up what's going on and then but then trying to figure out how to win it was a completely other thing that is a, I never got. <laughs> yeah, just the colors of it is already drawing me in, though. Like I'm interested. I have no idea what's happening, but it looks pretty, and, and now I'm I want to know what's happening. Yeah, I mean, you, you get like the older versions, but I think you get like Camasado Max now. I will say that the the Max bit is pointless. Um, it makes the board bigger and all that stuff, which is good. But it also added some extra rules that you can do for like the complex version of this game, which the designer only put in because he used to play this with his son a lot and the son wanted something extra. That's it. He doesn't even recommend you play with those experience rules. So they're kind of, they're, they don't, they're not a big chunk of the game. They're pointless. I've never used them. You know, that's how much I don't want to try. Because once you start explaining those extra rules, it's like, yeah, but you've just lost that unique selling point of, I could teach you this in 30 seconds. I can't anymore now. But nah, it's certainly a good one. If you like the abstract games, pick up this version. It will look good. It takes up the same space as a typical size game. It's the only thing. It's not exactly uh, the most portable abstract in the world. But nah, does me good. I enjoy it. So Camasado. Do -do -do -do. And that was number eight, so moving on to seven. I think we'll be talking about a couple of those later. <laughs> I had that. I had that. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> I had that from Alex when we were doing our 10 second reviews. I was like, I think I filled up his shopping cart with a ton of stuff. So uh, it kind of worked with that. But actually, before we, we continue, we haven't crossed over yet. Do you think we're going to get any? I. I... I think that there's our top two are going to be mentioned by you as well. I guarantee it. Over oh, that, I guarantee, I, guarantee, I, guarantee it. is a two song. Yes, yeah, I, I, I do this. I'll go as high as three. I think I'll go three if you're going two. I wouldn't go any higher because at first I thought like, oh, we'd probably cross over on a fair few. But then I realized that a lot of mine are probably a bit more cult of the semi-old maybe not stupidly old but then you're not you haven't done many recent ones either and like you say you've gone 
to a very different like with things like Lord of the Rings confrontation and then crimson out of nowhere so it's like okay <laughs> yeah. but that was half the reason to bring you two on because I felt like right well if my list is going to be generic I know yours won't <laughs> and you've got the more experience in the field so all right what's your seven um our number seven is okay it's a mouthful let, let me get ready okay Harry Potter Hogwarts <laughs> battle defense against the dark arts yes I nailed it Nine, nine <laughs> <words in that laughs> <title>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is just a, a dueling game, a deck building dueling game where you're trying to move across um, a board and, and basically knock the other person off by by attacking them as you're dueling. Yeah, so I mean, it, it takes the Harry Potter, uh, what is it called? Ho Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, which is a cooperative yeah. game, uh, and makes it into a two-player competitive game. Yeah. You play three rounds, best of three. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got it's got a really fast you know pace thing. You're kind of moving. It's kind of a teeter totter, moving this yes, little token yeah. back and forth. Um, and so can, you can occasionally get into a situation where uh, there it is. That's that thing you're. That's yeah, there's a the trap right there. You can get into a situation where one half person has a really strong offense, the other person has a really strong defense, and you kind of just kind of go back and forth right in the middle, yeah. and each round can take a little longer. But if you know that's only some of the games and even still it's still tense because that means your deck is working yeah. the way that you built it so and then there's three rounds so it's it's the best of yeah best three two out of three yeah uh, uh, so so did this come out after hogwarts back because i've still not played the original deck builder my friends have and i know i need to play it with them at some point but is this like this follow on from it then yes yeah it's, it came out after that i didn't realize they released any extra sets i knew they did that deck battle one and they did all the movies i wasn't aware that there were spin-offs yeah. yeah, there's there's a lot. We may have a lot of them. We have a lot of Harry Potter games <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> I love that. That's I mean. I've I've not tried the deck battle one. I know I need to. I mean, I'm a Harry Potter fan as well. Well, if you cast movie fan, a fan, <laughs> I don't read, but it's I've just not tried a lot or not found a lot of Harry Potter board games in general, let alone ones that I can go. Yes, this is a game I want to try. But it's that deck building one that's on my list to give a shot. And see what and it's, it's like. Yeah. That's what this is. It's a two-player deck building game. If you like the cooperative version, you know the main big one, uh, and you play it two players. We played it two players all the way through each, you know, because it's kind of a, a campaign style as you're going through the seven books or the seven movies or whatever. Uh, when you, we played as two characters each, so that way we had all the special abilities accounted for. Yeah. So we'd, I'd have my character take a turn, then she'd have one of her characters take a turn, and then and bounce back and forth, playing as four players, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. I had not there. Uh, people sort of noticed that as soon as you said that title, for I am not typing that <laughs> at all. So I said, and the rest. I thought I am not. <laughs> I could not remember anything after Harry Potter, so I thought, oh, screw that. I'm not typing this. <laughs> it is not oh, happening. Cool. It is. Oh, uh, I'm just happy I said it, like without stumbling over my own words. I'm really pleased with myself. I'm going away from this whole thing just thinking I said that game right. <laughs> That's yeah. my takeaway. I figured you got it written down. That's the thing that helps. <laughs> All right, but that's better alternative than Star Realms. Or I suppose you're talking about the deck building one there. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, there are a couple of fans out there who are aware of this. Like I say, I never would have seen it. Um, I think a few people have uh, sort of tried the co-op game but not tried that one, even though there's general love for Harry Potter. I'll yeah. just nip um, Carl in the bud there, though. Is that if I don't see War Chest on the list, I riot. Um... As much as it's behind my head, War Chest was designed as either a two and four player game. I kind of ruled it out by my original caveat that I figured it wasn't just like, oh, this is a two player game, but nobody plays it four. I have played War Chest with four players. It does work. So it is now a two and four player game. I just for some reason decided that wasn't valuable for the list. But uh, you want to make it number 11, go ahead. You know, it's definitely good. <laughs> so, all right. So numbers. Whoop. It's always hard to keep count. Number seven. Yes. So, two players there. One mechanic that you don't tend to see feature with uh, two-player games is worker placement. Because most worker placement games will be multiplayer. You think, well, how can you make a worker placement game for just two? I mean, how many spots can you possibly have? It's not going to work. But it can work as long as you get Targi. Targi is a big surprise i didn't think that this was like oh no why is everyone going on about this targi and it's like okay so it's not the most thematic game in the world but 
this one, particularly when you get the expansion and replace some of the cards that are in it, is that's a bad example with the weird <laughs> language and print and play. That, that's better. This one here, I, it has been a while since I've played it, but the idea being that you're trying to activate these cards in the middle of the grid, but you're doing it by placing your two workers around the outside border, which is, I think, generally the same every game. It might vary. No, I think it's the same because they've got the borders. And... The idea being that if you place your worker on one column, your opponent then can't go on the opposite space. So that's how you block each other off. But once you do get your two people down, then the intersections, as you can see, you've got the blue here and the blue there. You put the little cylinder disc on and that's the card you activate. So there's a worker there, there's a worker there, into middle, that's their space they activate. And the same goes for white. And your objective is pretty straightforward. You're essentially collecting like salt, uh, I think it's like salt beans or salt coffee and something else. I forget. It has been a while, but you know, you're you getting your generic resources as far as it's concerned, and you're using it to play cards at your hand that you know might give you a bonus or get you some more points. So the the general objective is pretty straightforward, or like most other Euros. But it's just that that worker placement system is really good because even for just two players, it works. It is tense. You can easily block off each other's space. There is a lot of shouting <laughs> when it's involved. <laughs> and the expansion just adds like a couple of extra elements and just makes it that little bit better. Uh, but even if you don't get the expansion, just grab the base game and try this one out. It's definitely a... I wouldn't say heavy. It's not heavy. It's I wouldn't call it light though either because it has got a bit of depth. But I mean, you just want something that's maybe got a bit more meat to it than the average two-player game and worker placement's your thing, then definitely give this one a look. Yeah, when we did our first two-player list, and we, you know, put in the comments, everybody, hey, put it, what, your, what your favorite game is. Targi is the game that came up the most that we didn't mention yeah, on our yeah. list. Targi came up again and again and again. And it's still not one I haven't played, but it's definitely on the list now. Yeah. I want is to it, play it now. It looks awesome. So you haven't, so you two have not tried this one yet? or is, I haven't, no. Over that definitely worth it. I mean, if you can't get the expansion, don't worry too much because it adds, I think, one or two extra small mechanics. But what it does do is that it replaces some of the cards because of like what it kind of adds. So it does improve it, but not in the sense that the base game was bad and it fixed yeah. it. No, it's just like oh, it's it's made it even better, but it had to replace certain things in order for it to work. But uh, you know, like some people have not even had the need to add it in yet. You could get the base game, nothing else, and be perfectly content, really. So I certainly wouldn't suggest buying both at the same time if you're not even certain that you're going to do it. Uh, Carl wasn't overly too happy about my uh, <laughs> war chest thing. Sorry, Carl, but I've I, it, I had to... The thing is, if I put that on the list, I don't know if I could... I mean, you'll probably cry foul later on with a certain choice of mine, but uh, that'll work with it. Salt, dates, and pepper. That's it. I keep thinking there's coffee in this game, but it's not. It's, I keep thinking the dates are the coffee, but it's not. <laughs> so, because most of these other games usually have coffee somewhere, and I'm a bit of a coffee holic now. I must have been in recent in recent months, so it's uh, kind of worked there. But no, it's it's a good salty beans. <laughs> <laughs> and is it free workers? I don't remember it being free. It, it looked like that on the images. I thought it was only there's one. Oh yeah, of course it's got to be free, hasn't it? Yeah, because they've got to intersect twice. Yeah, my bad, but because uh, I think the grey one is a different story. I think he just automatically blocks. But yeah, in order for two, yeah, it would be free, wouldn't it? Yeah, that makes sense. So apparently, played Targi in Egypt, actually in the desert. That's pretty good going. I've <laughs> I've heard of people who have played games like this, like like they played Carcassonne in actual Carcassonne, and it's like okay, fair enough. And a few like oh, we've played on the underground in a metro station or something like that that's probably the furthest example i've heard you know playing one of these games in actual <laughs> egypt on a sand dune <laughs> i mean you was win. this you, you, you get the prize you win yeah <laughs> yeah you say yeah you win the internet today <laughs> but how would that go? i mean you're in the middle of a desert and you just brought targi with you for the sake of it you know i mean are we talking like you're in a t settlement near the edge in the desert or you were actually nothing but sand dunes around dying of first okay life or death here but you know what i fancy a game of targi is like, how does that's this work one, that's the <laughs> it was the life or death one it's what kept them sane so they could there you go. continue living <laughs> fight for another day nah but it is a good as a but definitely give this one a try if i'm going to recommend any on my list that i don't think is on yours this is definitely one i would go for
Now I'm a six. All right. So that was, you said mentioned it was on maybe on the heavier end of two player game spectrum. This one is going to be on probably the lightest two player game. Yeah. Maybe ever. Well, maybe I've, ever. Got, <laughs> I've got much heavier than what I just said, but I've, I suppose out of, the, out of the more casual two player games, like the cheaper ones, yeah, that's on the heavier side. But oh God, yeah, I've got heavier than that. <laughs> in the, in the way, the way back machine, yeah. this is a game called Blink. It is just this microscopic deck of cards. Um, kind of like speed it's like the card game speed like we play the traditional like of cards but it's been somewhat board gamified i think it might have even won like the spiel de jar it's like in the 80s or something <laughs> but yeah or i guess 95 is when it came out but uh that, yeah this big shiny blink here rank 4795 re-implemented by a game called sprint free okay <laughs> this yeah, is a first <laughs> it is a teeny tiny deck of cards and you're just trying to match up what either a symbol, a quantity, or a color. And you're just throwing cards out there as fast as you can, refreshing your hand, trying to get rid of your cards unbelievably fast. You're it's, trying to be the first one out. Yeah, trying yeah. to get rid of your cards. It's maybe two minutes, maybe, max, and you can play you know, a couple rounds of it. We mentioned playing with our daughters. This is one our yes. seven-year-old loves and asks uh, for all the time, which is yeah. probably why I made yeah. the list. Over anything other, anything other chaotic will win it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually give myself more cards than her to make it, you know, a little more challenging for myself. Yeah. I and think she's slow playing you to like make you do that, and then eventually she's just gonna <laughs> always defeat you, and you won't understand why. She's really made it even, and yeah, it's kind yeah. of fitting actually. It says age seven to adult on the back of the box there. So it's kind of, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that, so, so you got to match the shape, count, or colors. So or what? Like as they flip over, as soon as you see one that matches, you got to shout, blink, and chuck it out, or something. Yeah, so you've got so a small hand of cards, yeah. and then uh, you know you have to play them one at a time. So that some, someone might play a, a three green, you know, triangle or whatever it is, and then you can play, play on top of that as fast as you can. Even, even if it yourself, even if you played that card, you'd play another card that matched either either one of the symbols, colors, or or quantity. Hmm. So there's two decks in front that are face up that yeah. have those, two, and then you yeah, yeah and then two you stacks. just play off of those whenever you can. And if someone to empty. So if someone like covers it before you do, then you've lost yeah. your chance and they're going fast. All right. Okay. I, I get the mechanic. I mean, it's been repeated in a few others a bit like, uh, was it an, an Amnomia or something? Uh, Anonia. It was a, it was a little memory-ish game. Like you had to remember what was out there as well as what it was. But I have seen this kind of thing of like, yeah, get it out. I mean, that's, I suppose that's kind of what one of the games in Double is now. Uh, a similar thing where you've got the symbols on those round cards and you slap them out if you see the symbol that matches and that so yeah it's but blink looks like one of the more older ones and i certainly would not have been guessing that would have been on the list <laughs> but yeah like we said this is one that our, our seven-year-old loves which is probably why i made the list if it's we don't play it hardly ever unless we're like okay we've got two minutes for a game what yeah. do you what do you want to choose but well it's, blink. It's like how many options do you like... have <laughs> for two minutes <laughs> It's just really reminiscent of like Ryan and I started playing games when we were kids as card games. And yeah. since it's just so similar to the card game of speed, it just like naturally comes into our gameplay. Yeah. Well, that, the art's a lot cooler than ours too. I like that. There's a f I would say there's a few people that have heard of it. I mean, uh, apparently beyond someone has mentioned blank me and my sister used to play this all the time i'm guessing well younger perhaps but who knows i mean uh 1995 probably would i have been then uh nine years old you know so i mean that would have been in that sort of way but no i'd never heard of it um i'm just going to repeat what somebody has mentioned actually uh thank you but uh i can't pronounce that name sorry uh potate <laughs> so, sorry if i'm like absolutely demolishing that name but it that targi game i mentioned if you're on board game arena it's on there I mean, it's a pretty okay, good nice. it's a pretty good implementation so if you want a test run go play it on there first that would be definitely it uh blink sounds a bit like set can't remember set so that rings a bell i must admit when it when we start going back beyond like 1995 unless it's stuff like hero quest and key to the kingdom and all of those fantasy s games i'm probably more drawing a blank because i have to remember what we played in our childhood that went beyond monopoly and hotel which i know i played quite a bit of uh, but no, there's quite a few. Uh, ah, yeah, that's the one. Anom Anomia, I think that's how you pronounce it, or something like that. But uh, that's the game I was thinking of. So, uh, hmm, so good ones. Right, so that ah, one. Ooh, I gotta scroll back, trying to remember it. Number six. Right, we're going back to abstract games now. So again, two player. A little bit of a history lesson. I played chess, but this isn't the choice. But <clears throat> I played chess since. Uh, 
third, like halfway through primary school. I think once I conquered my like, speech impediment problem, because I had a like language issue the first few years before I conquered it. But I started getting into chess then, and there was a chess club at primary school, which pretty much is the sole reason you can explain why I'm still single now. I'm playing chess <laughs> as a kid in a chess club. Why do you think I'm single now? But the... But got addicted and got really good at it. I had a friend of mine who was like, one of my best mates there was a rival. And even my brothers got into chess. We played it at home. And that's why we're like the one of the few games that all three of us have played like religiously for a bit. Continued it into secondary school, not in a club, but there was a pub nearby, that, uh, like a railway club that had a lot of people pretty much all over the age of 60 that played chess. Were pretty good. They allowed me to join. I was 14 at the time. So there was a bit of an age gap. And, you know, I got playing chess against other pubs and that, and it was pretty sweet. And I can't remember when I stopped playing, but I'd certainly love to pick it up again. This one, on the other hand, though, is basically, I want my chess itch now. It's Arnie Tama, if anyone that hasn't already guessed this one. So, this is a great abstract game. It very, pretty much plays like chess. You know, but it, you've got your five pieces, and you move them as if you would on the chess board, but... The tweak with this being, besides just coming in a really cool shaped box with a roll up mat and these plastic bones, but this here, you've got those five cards. Have you played this one? You sound like you haven't played this one. Oh, I this have. is. You have though. Have I you? play this on my phone every day. <laughs> All right, so we got <laughs> so we got one expert and one not. All right, I was going to say one one of, one of you had figured it out and the other one blatantly hadn't, but yeah. <laughs> But for those, well, definitely easier to play the chess show, I'm going to say that, but yeah, with here, you got the five cards. And this is a bit like the Kamasado one, so teach you it in a minute, and then you get going, and it's done well at those events. There's your five cards. That tells you how the pieces move, the whole game. Five out of something like 25 cards in the deck that you can choose from, completely random. You choose one of your two cards, move a piece, swap it with that one in the middle, and then next player takes their turn, same thing. So these cards are constantly swapping between the middle. And you can see what the opponent has. You can see on the little diagram what they can move. So like chess, if they go on your space, it threatens your piece and it takes it. And the objective is either to uh, get your master to sit on the opponent's seat, which is that bit in the middle, or just straight up capture the master. So the, the big one. This is like a, it's like a dojo, sensei and students. So just think like Kung Fu, Karate Kid, that kind of thing. But... You know, simple objective, but because you can see what your opponent does, you can see what spaces are free, so you think, oh, I'll just slot into that one. But then you've also got the thing of, well, hang on, if I give him the Cobra card, then he's going to be able to shoot back round, and because I've got, like, the rabbit in the eel, I can't move to the left diagonal or anything, so as soon as he comes down there, I'm in trouble. So you've got to, you've got a lot of thinking about what the opponent's going to do. Very good tactical back and forth. And, you know, uh, One Pit Wonders mentioned just literally now the Duke. I have played the Duke, which is kind of a bit like a sort of two-player chess scene. I like that one as well. I just prefer this one for the simplicity. The Duke's got like every single tile has how you move it printed on each one, and there's a lot of them. So it, that one's a bit more complex. But this one, I get a kick out of. But if you've been playing it on your phone, how come Bethany hasn't tried it? <laughs> I've... I think I've put a, I've offered it to you like when we we're at a restaurant or something because there's a, a, a plus and play kind of a. Okay, uh, I did play it. That's totally okay. No, I because I'm you're talking about. You're supposed to be stronger here. You're supposed to be stronger today. I was sounds so familiar now, and we did it like like a year or so ago. We did do a pass and play when we went out on a date. That's why I remember it. Yes, I played it once. I did it. <laughs> we don't have the physical Check copy, mark. which is why yeah. we don't have it. We haven't. Uh, you know, played it, played yeah. it live, but yeah, it's, and it's one of those games too, where because I'm more familiar with it, like it would be impossible for me to be play competitively. <coughs> right. Yeah. It's just like, <coughs> it'd be pointless. Ryan would win in like five moves <laughs> and then I'd be sad and we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> happy wife sleep at night. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good one. That's interesting, but yeah, we'll be played 500 years from now. But it, it does have that kind of characteristic. I mean, a lot of these abstract games that have survived the test of time wouldn't necessarily have cards. You know, would like to say, oh, move your piece like this. But I mean, this is one of those games that's got to resurface somehow. You know, little box. Look, if somebody's bored with chess, you can sort of go, well, how about this? And this would be a good one. But 
Imagine in this one with ivory tiles instead of cards and a fabric. I don't get this fabric board thing. No, sorry. Just because like Pax Paneer and a few other ones like did this. This whole idea. I play like Tokyo Metro was another one. This the idea that you're. Think, I like mats. I like these play mats, but they don't have to be made of cloth. I don't need like a quirk for a board game to be. You can iron your mat. It's not. <laughs> but I don't know. It's. It's, like I say, that's a silly little thing, but it's just that now we seem to be entering the stage where certain publishers are starting to put fabric mats. And it's like, I was happy with neoprene. <laughs> so mouse mats mouse mats were totally fine, but ah well, <laughs> to each their own. All right, so number six, moving on to fives. Should have turned off his comment. <laughs> Carry on. I'm too busy like looking at the picture to see if I know any of them. <laughs> I do. Well, the comment got in the way. As a, <laughs> it's so hard to concentrate on all that stuff. <laughs> so um, our number five, there's both implementations of this that we like, but we chose the first one as our preferred one. And that is um, Fox in the Forest, which is a uh, two-player trick-taking game. And when, when I first heard of two-player trick-taking game, I guess I wasn't really optimistic because we had just played... I mean, we played Euchre just all the time, just all the time. So I'm thinking there's just no way you can do this well because there's a two-player way of Euchre mm. and it's awful and never do it. Mm. So, but I was really in, impressed with Fox in the Forest duet and how you want to aim for a certain amount of tricks in order to get a certain amount of points and you can't take everything and all of that. And so I thought they did a really good job of making a two-player trick-taking game that wasn't just take all the tricks. Is it actually... Nice. Is it actually the duet version specifically? Because I noticed both of them said two-player. Fox in the Forest by itself is a two-player trick-taking game. The duet is a, a cooperative version of it. Yeah. So there's one's competitive, one's cooperative. And they're both good. We just prefer a little bit better the original. Yeah. We prefer to attack each other instead of work together. <laughs> I'm noticing, yeah. <laughs> this, this is like so high on my list that I need to try it. It's unreal. Because it... I hear about this on everybody's top 10 two-player games list. It's like, you cannot escape it. And, you know, it'll say duet on the bottom of the screen. Just say Fox in the Forest. But I I, I mean, I would play it either way. Competitive or co-op. I like co-ops as well. But all I hear about is like, this is game is good. This game is good. And it looks gorgeous. I like the imagery on there. It looks like a game. I can't see why I wouldn't like it. But, you know... At the point, I just can't justify buying a two-player game specifically, but I would so want to try this one. They created a fairy tale story to go with the game. Actually, that is on. Um, is it on Renegades? Renegades yeah. website, yeah. Yeah. So actual... there's like this this um, story that they created to make it feel like a fairy tale, and so they actually hired somebody to create a story to go with um, Fox in the Forest. So all the art for both the regular and the duet yes. is you know based off of it and. Uh... And, you know, I can't say the right word, but mm. it's all it's all indicative of that. I, I don't blame. I mean, this one pretty much is like screwed to me. Like, even just to stare at the cards, I would want to try this one. But just the fact that everybody says that I haven't heard a single bad word about this one. Not everyone's played it, but I've not heard anybody say this is bad. And even like, you know, half the people in the chat deserves to be played once this game is awesome i love the art it's generally good positively for this i gotta one. go be a mom i'll be right back ah fair enough <laughs> that's the advantage of having two of you <laughs> so, yeah exactly <laughs> but yeah i gotta try this but I, I just couldn't justify playing it now because for example on here this is not on my list for the sole reason i have not played it but i bought this uh when did i buy this probably a good well, it would have been before lockdown, but still, probably about three, four months before lockdown did. So that's uh, when COVID started. So we're talking, this is about a year and a half old. I still haven't played it because it's just like, I bought it solely because it was Red Raven games and anything they touch is something I want to play. Right. But, and it looked gorgeous. It looks gorgeous, but it's two player only. I've just not had the chance to play the wretched thing, but I refuse to get rid of it because I am going to play it at some point and hopefully enjoy it. But I just wasn't the best for me on that one okay so number five fox and the forest my number five yes somebody said that one of your games earlier was a better alternative to this particular one uh i have yet to play it so i will not 
judge on that specifically, but I will not hear bad things said about Star Realms. I like <laughs> Star Realms. <laughs> Star Realms is a great... I love deck builders, pure deck builders especially, so and this one yes you can play it with multiplayer and solo but that was when you combine a bucket load of sets in in future expansions they included that in but when it first came out it was just this tiny little tuck box with a bunch of cards in it it was two player only and frankly i do like playing it solo every now and again but i would predominantly want to throw this down with two player I love the space artwork in it i mean i know you can get the fantasy version was it like hero realms hero but realms. but I can't compare it to this sci-fi artwork. I think I just like space artwork in general. So I can just stare at these if nothing else. But nice and simple deck builder. Pretty much every deck builder you know in the case of here's your five cards, use it or lose it, discard the rest, shuffle your deck, build it up. But a good tense battle of building up your bases to have some defense as you try and whittle down each other's life. Four factions, each with all different kinds of unique ships. Each color having its own kind of quirk. So... You know, these greens, the blobs are all very hard hitting. The yellows we just had were all like discard your hand. The blue is very much about healing and defense and like buying stuff. And red is kind of one of my favorites I like to use, which is like trashing stuff out of your deck because I'm always a big fan of that side. Mm -hmm. But super quick. I mean, if you've played a deck builder, you learn this in about two seconds. Games will be different because you won't see all the cards. And, you know, some combinations can be pretty powerful, but I mean, you see them coming, you know, they're around. And if you have just got the original, then all you have is a tiny little tuck box, and that's all you need. If you're someone like me who went a little bit mad with one of the Kickstarters, you have a slightly bigger box <laughs> in the other room and might be regretting getting that much of it. But it allowed me to play it solo, so I suppose it's not all bad. But I mean, if I downgraded and said, right, I just went the two-player set, I'd be perfectly happy. Yeah, I like, I like this one a lot. It was actually... On, I, our like, short on my on my top ten, it was on like number three or four. Yeah, um, but we don't play it together. Uh, yeah, I I love this game, and like this expansions just make it so good. I have played a four player too, which is fun. In Hero Realms, I think the only real difference is there's less of the expansions, less customizableness. But each hero starts in the deck, kind of makes it. Um, you should have a, a different kind of starting hand, a little asynchronous mm -hmm. starting hand, which is fun. But hero, you, just, you can't beat Star Realms. Yeah, it's fantastic. I think I've only played it on my phone. Actually, I don't know if I've ever played mm -hmm. the physical version ever. But well, Vlad Vladimir would agree with you because it does yeah. it, it does work pretty well digitally. Although whoever made the app needs to make better apps because I remember playing it a lot on my sort of like phone when I was traveling, and you know it just constantly kept crashing. So the app, the app had some stability issues, it must be said, but it did work quite nicely digitally with the background music and that. Uh, you mentioned about the extra, like the character you can throw in. I'll admit, Hero Realms for a little while had that slight perk because of that, because I really like that format. They've now brought that into Star Realms, so now the two of them are literally the same game, other than <laughs> theme and artwork. So, granted, yes, it. If you were just to compare the base sets, I might slightly go Hero Realms, but then I found Hero Realms to be just very much about get the biggest combat card and win. It, it, it seemed very much more about combat values, whereas this one kind of did a few more extra things. But yeah, once you once they both had the character starts, it's like, all right, cool, I'll go back to Star Realms. So <laughs> it worked well. I'll need, but, to, I'll need to find that one because I would, yeah, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> it work I will. I've been told by Bjorn to get Haven to the table. Like, at some point, I will. Well, trust me, when lockdown ends, you you see how many games I start getting people <laughs> around my place <laughs> when we've all been like vaccinated and had this problem. Granted, I will be a giddy school kid trying to get people around my house for the cafe to open again. It's just a case of uh, hurry up and let us in. <laughs> you know, I mean, you lot could. You've obviously got restrictions, but you're not like cooped up inside completely, are you? Yeah, you got a lot more flexibility your end. Yeah, my my job was considered uh, essential or whatever, so I've been going to work all throughout since everything. Yeah. Mm. Oh, we can work, yeah, because remote working yeah. exists, and accountants <laughs> can't get away from that. That's the thing. It's like you can't have any fun, but you can work. Isn't that great? <laughs> no, <laughs> like worst things ever. But nap number five. So on to fours.
All right, so uh, my number four is seven. Our, our number four. Our number four. <laughs> my, it's mine. This one actually is mine. Seven <laughs> more support. <laughs> <laughs> Whose list is this? Seven. <laughs> I, I'm the one who prefers this much more than Bethany. Uh, but yeah. Seven Wonders Duel, uh, what a great game. Uh, just the fact that there is different win conditions. You can win by just playing out the course of the game and whoever has the most points wins. Or there's a way that you can win by getting having the most military advancements. Or you can win by having the most scientific advancements. By, by kind of all three of those happening at the same time, you're constantly moving back and forth and trying, okay, well, they're starting to get a lot more military. Maybe I need to get some military so they don't win that way. Or... You know, you're you're on offense and defense and three different categories. Yeah. And uh, what's the expansion for this one? Uh, Pantheon is the expansion yes. that, yeah. that we have. That uh, I think there's a new one as well. But we don't have that one yet. Agora. Okay. Hmm. Sounds like you're a fan too. <laughs> <laughs> I like but, I like the I like the game fine. Yeah, so it's, it's it's a decent one. But uh, I, I recently did a sort of podcasting for the Agora expansion, and it, it's fine. But as you're probably about to say, you love Pantheon, right? Oh yes. There's no reason to get Agora if you have Pantheon. Got it. Okay. Good. It, it, if you want the most complex Seven Wonders duel possible, you get both. And you have both and you play with both. But it just takes it to a level which goes above what I wanted Seven Wonders duel to be, which is a simple two-player Seven Wonders. Pantheon, I agree with you, is fantastic and deserves to be in each game. But then why would I want Agora? I would always play with Pantheon. Yeah, this was a fun one. I had a lot of trouble with it at first because um, somebody was undefeated and it was not me. And it just gets really <laughs> frustrating after a while. But now that that is no longer the case, you know, I don't dislike it as much anymore. So it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> is that <laughs> always... Is it, you like a game if you win it often. That's the way. <laughs> not if I win it often. I just have to feel like I have the hope to win it. Because there's games we play that I never win, but you feel like you could, and then it's okay. Unless it's cooperative, and then we have to, like, be dying all the time, and then I'm having fun. Yeah. But that's a Bethany problem. I'm not pushing <laughs> that at other people. <laughs> we have to be dying all the time. <laughs> we, we, Ghost Stories the... and Atlantis Rising, then. Get those two. You'll be <laughs> pretty much like that. Every time we play a co-op, even out of the box, Bethany's like, crank it up, highest difficulty every yeah, time. all the time. Yeah. God, th there are some limits. I mean, you I dare you to buy ghost stories and do that mentality. I'll say, watch it kick your butt oh, every time, even yeah. on the easiest difficulty. I like that. Like, <laughs> I enjoy that. I just... Like I said, I'm working. I'm working on yeah. myself. It's okay. It, I don't think you quite get how hard that game is. <laughs> that when the the difficulty on that level is called hell. All right. <laughs> if you ever play, you ever when you play games like Doom and it's called hell, like hell on toast difficulty. There's a reason you don't play on those difficulties. <laughs> but I like that. Yeah. Fair enough. If you want other people to do that with me, <laughs> they don't join me. It's, it's just me going by myself. I'll join you, but I'll just know we're never going to win it. It's, like, it's, it's more a time trial, like how long can we keep going before we meet our demise? Yeah. Uh, but I think that... one of the interesting about Seven Wonders Duel is there pe there's people out there who don't like Seven Wonders, but they like Seven Wonders Duel. So I like that that's out there for people hmm. to have. I've heard I've heard more than one person say that. I don't understand you don't like Seven Wonders. Yeah. Something. I, I can understand. I mean, the two player in the original Seven Wonders, I thought was rubbish. The dummy player thing, it just yeah. didn't work. Oh so gosh, yeah. this was like, great. Now I get to play it two players. And yes, it's a slightly different drafting, but it's got its own shtick. So I can have both, you know, on the shelf and go, yes, cool. But the, I just don't get how you could say, I hate Seven Wonders, but this one is because they've still got some similarities. I mean, maybe the drafting thing is different enough. But you're still going blue cards for VP, yellow for this. There's just a slight difference with that. So it's kind of odd. I can understand one being better easily, but why have why hate one and not the other? That doesn't make sense. Right. Okie doke. All right, number four. Right, now we're getting into something a bit bigger <laughs> because I've done fairly small games for the most part, or at least fairly simple games. We're now getting on to something that's ridiculously huge. Now, not everybody likes this IP, but I do like it, despite the films not being perfect, shall we say, particularly with uh, the prequels. Yes, of course, it's Star Wars. Star Wars Rebellion, two-player. Yes, you can play this with four, but you should never play it with four, because all you do is share the forces. Who wants to do that? 
that stupid. <laughs> you know, I want to play with the whole side. But this is Star Wars in a box. There is no other Star Wars game that will give you as much theme as this. Not Outer Rim, not any of the others that I've played and liked. But with this one, controlling both sides, very different game. I mean, I'm trying to find a better image than people just showing off their uh, miniatures. But, I mean, they're good. But as the Empire, here's my Death Star, here's my forces. I'm trying to find the base. New kit, you just don't know where it is. The Rebels... They've hidden their base. They're trying to do hit and run missions and stuff to try and get like the rebellion reputation up in a sense. I forget how the, the description is, but basically to get that up and running. And if they get it to a certain stage and the Empire hasn't found their base yet, then they win. Obviously, the Empire wins by nuking their base. So they've all got different ways of playing. But all the different mission cards is stuff that you know from the movie. So, but it could still change. So it could be that Leia gets frozen in carbonite this time. You know, it could be that Luke never gets his lightsaber. And, you know, all these different story elements that are familiar. But it's like a, almost like playing a giant what if tale. You know, we got the what if thing coming out from Marvel at some point, which I'm really looking forward to. But, you know, this is kind of like what if Star Wars. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that kind of that. The cat and mouse, you know, of this game is in the, how the magic is. You're absolutely right. It is just like Star Wars, and it's incredibly immersive. And at the same time, it's 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 long, but yeah, you're, you know, it doesn't feel long. It doesn't feel like you spent two or three hours. It feels like you just sat down with some friends and, and talked about Star Wars for a little while. Mm. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I really enjoyed. It. I've only played it like twice, but both times were mm. incredible. That is my one problem with it, is I mentioned that it's hard to get two-player games to the table. Think how hard it is to get a three-hour, like two to three-hour two-player game to the table. It's somewhat difficult, and that is the thing. This one does not get played often. It's like one of my more lesser-played games just because of how hard it is to get to the table. But I always know it's going to be good when I do, even if I have to relearn half the rules. And I still will see it on the shelf and go, when do I get to play that again? And you know, I mean, honestly, if it would never happen, but if Fantasy Flight was to put out an official solo mode for this game, it would just be printing money. You know, like, great. I don't need more expansions of the game. I think it's got enough content as, as it is, especially when you throw the first one in. But just if you give me a solo mode, I'll be like crying out for it. But failing that, I've got one or two mates that now and again I can kind of call on and say, look, you're not doing much, you know. You know that like me, they live alone, so getting them for like two to three hours one evening is not usually quite as difficult. And we can just get to play this game. And I do love being... I think I've like been the Rebels more in this one. I like that hit and run thing of going, you don't know where I am, but having that thing of, oh, you're getting a little bit close. <laughs> it's too stressful for me. I don't want... <laughs> like, oh, ooh, oh, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. And you're trying to, at the same time, almost like reveal yourself in other places. So that way, you know, it, mm. it makes it seem like you're not where you actually are and... I don't know. I I think I like being the Empire better. <laughs> I just have so much more resources. <laughs> Other than that, it, I know, but I like that little stress factor. Is that I knew Carl was going to call foul on this. Playing four player in this is literally you split your forces, air and air and space, or sorry, space and land between the two of you. That's it. That is all four player does. There is no reason to play this at four players. And nobody, as far as I'm aware, does play it at four players. I think you just don't like I didn't put War Chest on the <laughs> list. <laughs> Which is understandable, fair enough. Uh, almost bought it. Yeah, buy it if you know you're going to play it. I mean, I bought it because it was Star Wars. <laughs> you know, that was pretty much printing money. But, you know, whether it's... I, I just want to get it to the table. But obviously, it's hard enough to get it to the table when we're allowed to have people around. Now, people have mentioned War of the Ring... Fair enough. I don't... Well, the only reason that's not on my list is because I have not played War of the Ring. It's crying out for me to play it. I love Lord of the Rings probably more than I like Star Wars, but I've just never played... Never had a chance to play it. I mean, it's another one of those three-plus-hour games that needs a bucket load of rules. Nobody I know owns it who can teach me, and it's not something that I'm going to go out, spend a ton of money on, and hopefully play it at one point in my life. <laughs> It's basically exactly our situation too. I, I know that we would like Lord of the, Lord, War of the Ring. Just never played it. Never had a chance. It's one of those things that you can play at a convention really easily, but there's so much else calling for attention. You know, um, mm. that you don't get to sit down and play. Just dedicate three hours to one game. 
Yeah. yeah, and at a convention, you want to play as much as you can. I want to meet as many people as I can, so I don't tend to play two players at conventions. You know, right. I'm I'm sort of like, right, I've bought a bunch of games that can house four people. Let's play four. You know, <laughs> get in this yeah. game, but yeah. it works. All right, and the freeze. Did you get them all? <laughs> <laughs> One of my least favorite games was in that picture, but we won't go there. Um, I like, so... <laughs> uh, I can. I'm guessing Splendor. Yo, she gosh. hates Splendor. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, I mean, out of those three, I thought if you hate Ticket to Ride, we're gonna have words, but I can understand. Can live stream now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should have lost Ryan Bethany. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, I wouldn't do that to you two. I would much rather do that to um, board game ramblings. But <laughs> is that you? D Sorry, you don't like what game? <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see a theme with our list so far. We have a lot of like small games of bigger games or implementations of other games. And this is another one of that. And this is Codenamed Duet. Um, I really, this is kind of like how Seven Wonders was for Ryan. Like he enjoyed it more. I enjoy Codenames Duet a lot more. It is so challenging for us. It will definitely test any relationship you're in while you're playing this game. <laughs> but I just have such a fun time. So it's, you're trying to get your partners to guess certain words to clear off the board, much like code names, but you're trying to do it cooperatively. You have, um, you each have a different assassin. So you each have a word. Three different assassins. Three different assassins. You each have three assassins that you, um, that you don't want the other person to guess on you. However, one of those assassins is also a word that your other player is trying to get you to guess. So there's that that stress between there of trying to do that. There is a campaign mode of this where you um, can go to different places and you can either do X amount of mistakes or you get X amount of clues depending on where you are. So I think we're maybe like a third of the way through that campaign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is keep on losing <laughs> because yeah. we, like we mentioned we like hard co-ops yeah how, how does a campaign work and i've only played it normal mode so wh what would you do yeah. in campaign so basically you have nine clues i think is i believe nine is the right number you have nine clues that you can give out and you can make as many mistakes as you want as long as you get the clues that you need to but as over the course of the um campaign the number of clues you're allowed to give changes may probably usually goes down. You know, eight, you don't have eight clues this time and the amount of mistakes you can have goes down as well. Yeah. Depending, as you move along this map, along this track, it'll say, okay, so now you can only use six clues. You can make as many mistakes as you want. In though. the picture, you can kind of see that background where it says seven, four, like that's how many yeah. clues you can give and how many mistakes you can make. So oh, I see the, the, yeah. the map. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's just makes each everywhere you go is uh, is more challenging than than the place previously on the map. <laughs> so the and, game uh, isn't challenging enough. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I've I, I've lost way more of this than I have there, and I can't always blame it on the opponent, but well, on the co-op player. <laughs> I suppose that's the one way of thinking. But yeah, I find this one harder to win than any of the other code names. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't. Our brains don't think the same way. They do not. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> We very rarely yeah. <laughs> sync up and, and and do well at this, but it's. Uh, I feel like if you had a sibling you were close to, that you could probably rock this game. Just mm. all of those years worth of childhood and stuff together. I just like when we play regular code names, and my sisters on my team it's don't even don't even bother. Like we we're beating <laughs> you, and I just feel like we could probably do this really well. And regular code names, you can really. Uh, you, if even if you give a clue and the person that you're trying to give it to doesn't get it, someone else might. Mm -hmm. This one you're really just depending on the other. You're really trying to mind meld with them specifically. Yeah. Uh, which is which is challenging. Which is very hard when I've usually played this with people I don't know as well. <laughs> so it's, oh yeah, that'd be difficult. But it as I said, code names I think I kind of burnt out on after a while. This one didn't make the list, but I would say this is my second favorite of the lot. I don't like playing the original one anymore. The multiplayer word game takes a while there's only so many clues you can come up with for words and everyone sits in silence this one's probably my second favorite the duet one because i do think it's a pretty good design and i do like it i pictures was the one that i thought god if i was going to own it i would grab the pictures one 
possibly just because I'm obsessed with things like the dick sitting in Obscurio and all that lot on my shelf there. But I find it's a lot easier to come up with a clue for a picture because picture speaks a thousand words. Whereas if I get the word pencil in front of me, there's only so many things I can link to a pencil. Uh, But obviously the downside of that is the pictures can all link up very easily together. So you've got that extra stress factor. But I, I prefer that to the stress of getting three words that have no correlation with each other whatsoever and you can't seem to get around it. Well, the Harry Potter one, too, has both. So one side, it's pictures of the movies, and then the other side, it's the words of that. I think it's how Disney and Marvel and how those are, too. Those IP-based ones are, 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 they're, I don't know, they're hard because if you're playing with a fan, you know, let's say Marvel, who's someone who's read the comic books a lot, whereas someone else is like, yeah, I'm a big Marvel fan, but they've only ever seen, like, the MCU movies or something, you know, it's a different level of clue giving, and then at that point, you're reduced to, like, hero or red mm. or, you know, yeah. I don't know. I guess that, but they've done it for each of them, and I've never sort of tried those ones. Uh, yeah. The replayability of a code names do it. I mean, it's the same as the other code names. You've got plenty enough words. It's not like they're going to go, not like you're going to see the same combination. You've still got the screens. With two of you, it's challenging, so you're not going to win it anywhere near as often. I mean, it, I'd say it's good replayability on its own. I mean, all the code names have got fairly decent replayability. Yeah. I don't yeah. see why this one would be any better or worse. All right, my number three. This is going to drive Kyle mad uh, <laughs> because this is the one where I said I made that specific caveat that just because it does have a solo mode in it, it was designed specifically for two players. And the last time I did this list, I didn't put it on there because I was more strict with the list. But as I was going through this one and realized that I was kind of rinse repeating to an extent, I thought, no, I'm putting this game on the list because I want to talk about it because it is amazing. This is like as if, you know, wasn't the biggest sound of Agricola. Love Caverna, but Fields of Arl is like the like, two-player game. And I almost just lost the comment. There we go. <laughs> but I love this. This is my favorite of Uri Rosenberg's games period, I think, actually. Yes, not just like the farming ones. I think this is my favorite Uri Rosenberg game. It says one to two, best two. It does mean best two. I mean, I play it solo, you know, a bit more often than two just because of circumstances. But as a two player, this one is a great farming worker placement. But you want the ultimate sandbox worker placement game for farming. This is it. That's the table presence right there. That's a lot of boards (laughs) and a lot of stuff. But I already mentioned with Caverna, you could sort of focus on one area, like I want sheep, I want stone or whatever, and get points for that. This has that already, but in spades with how many options you have. Worker placement is nice and simple. That left board is it left one. Yeah, because they rearrange those differently. But you've got the tools there with people's markers on it. And the action spaces are on the left and right. In different seasons, you can go on different spaces. But the tool dictates how good the action is. And one of your ways of getting points in the game could be just to level up those tools so you get an axe it gets you two wood if you level up the axe you can get four or five each time you go there so all the different spaces have got an upgradable ability on them but then what do you do with the like your middle board and the rest well hmm (laughs) what do you want to do uh dehydrate your land uh migrate the dikes to the the coastline because it's like german farmland thing um i'll just farm corn maybe i'll just get sheep maybe just cows could get horses as well, could just upgrade me tools, could get some buildings, could get some vehicles and go trade to the local settlements, uh, it could make some clothes, that's pretty cool. Yeah, The amount of options you have in this is staggering, and that's before you throw in tea and trade to make it not only free players, but like I say, it's an expansion, so it doesn't invalidate it, but... But then also to add things like trading tea and all these other ones, it's like, for crying out loud, the options in this is ridiculous. And I love it because I just get sandbox games work for me. I love variety as a spice of life is my way of like doing a lot of things with my food, with games. You give me a lot of options in a game. I'm going to like basically jump on it. And this one just allows me to go, what do I fancy doing? I don't know. It's going to take me a while to consider this and then go with it. And you score points for a lot. It is a point salad and there's even half points <laughs> like you know your basic wood is half a point timber is a full point i've had games where i have won and lost this by half a point it does happen <laughs> oh <my laughs> it can get that close but i it, this one was bump, bumping with caverna for me for a while like well, which one do i like more which one do i like more it's now hands down 
Fields of All. This, I've never played. Uh, I had a friend come over. We set it up. He taught me the game. And then we had a third player show up. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we couldn't actually play it because that, we can't make that third person sit out for, you know, this is a fairly long game, right? Probably, yeah. what, three hours maybe-ish? No, not for it. it it's two more hours, about, maybe. yeah, two hours is a, when you know what you're doing, two hours is a bit more. Okay, I mean, you could probably get it done in 90 minutes if you really know what you're doing. It shouldn't take any longer than two and a half when you're like first learning the game uh but it is definitely one like uh i, I like some of these common areas leveled up axe a chainsaw is a, i'm not sure the technologies <laughs> in the game for that but it it is what it is so it was two player only but you could play it solo but solo is literally just play the game and see how much fuck you can get so i do play it every now and again because i just love being able to pick an option and see what happens but Two player is really the way to play it because you want that tension for the spots because there's only so many on each side and you can jump to the other season. Like there is one time you can move a piece over there, but if you do so, you give the other player first turn. So there's that aspect. So there's not a huge amount of spaces and you you can usually tell that the opponent's going to nick one of yours at some point, particularly if you're on similar strategies. But just the wealth of options is ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. It's like Caverna had a lot of stuff in it. This basically like doubles what Caverna can do. Certainly not for the light players, but if you just want a sandbox farming game, this is pretty much what you can get. Um, how's it compared to Halito or Noosford? To be honest, I'm not a big fan of Noosford. Um, I've only played it the once. And Halito I reviewed in December. You can check that video out, but this is nothing like those two games. I mean, Noosford is a very different kettle of fish and well, whatever the phrase is. And Halito is more about the cards as opposed to that. And it's a bit more abstracted, even though it is technically a worker placement. So no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't compare this. I would compare this more to Caverna and just say it's got a very much more sandbox feel than Caverna. I can't think of what else, but there's definitely the heaviest one on my list. That's for certain. <laughs> I don't know. Have you got anything heavier than this on yours? No. I'm going to guess not. <laughs> <laughs> totally in sync. Yeah, if I made my, my list, there might have been one or two of those, but this, yeah, this was like our combined, yeah. like, <laughs> we play together kind of a list. So, yeah, Well, you could play this one together. It just might yeah. take you some time. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it's not for everyone now, nah, but I mean, if you... It's, it's really it's for the Uwe Rosenberg fans who don't mind the restricted player count. But yeah, that's kind of it. I mean, you get couples who are Uwe Rosenberg fans. If they don't have this in their collection, I'd be con considering why. Because <laughs> it's kind of like tailor-made for it. But unless you're not into heavy games, I guess. All right. Well, Bethany will want to know, do you have to feed your people? Yeah. Are they feeding of the people? Uh, I Yes, but it's if you imagine that Caverner, you could get around it really easily. This is even easier. You've got okay. a main, you've got a maintenance in at each of half season where like you know your cows milk, your sheep give you wool and stuff like that automatically. There is like a all right, spend food, but it's easy to get food. I mean, it's just it's another thing that is there, but in no way should you have the end of a round where you're like I'm starving. <laughs> so, something would have to go catastrophically it's round. It's not punishing then, right? Nah, I mean this is. No, this is no, this is pretty flexible. I mean, somebody could block you out of a space, which is annoying. But because it's a point salad, yes, okay, I can't go fishing this turn, but I could always just go and chop some wood down. That's still pretty useful, you know. You know, I wanted to go make some clothes. All right, fine. Well, that building there is looking pretty good. I'll grab that. So, nah, this one's a bit more on the flexible side. Probably one of the other reasons I do like it. All right, two. Say so, four games left. Are they going to be unique though? We shall see. <laughs> All right, so speaking of Uwe Rosenberg, uh, our number two is Patchwork. Oh, yes. Uh, this is the, the quilting uh, tile laying game. Uh, he's very fond of A, farming games, which we talked about, and B, tile laying games, <laughs> or a combination sometimes. Just a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this, I think, is the most boiled down, most uh, simple tile laying game uh, of his, it's just you know you're paying paying these in two different currencies. One being buttons, and the other currency is time. It takes time to sew on these different patches to these quilts. And uh, yeah, it's 
you're trying to fill up your spot there. There's bonuses for if you're able to get the first person to have a seven by seven completely filled in. Um, but really, it's just it's kind of this you're spending this time. And as you spend more and more time, you progress towards the end of the game. Uh, there's this income that you get when you pass certain spots on the on the time track, which is you get paid in buttons, which is how you purchase new tiles. Uh, and you can kind of see the price tags on there in, in terms of both how many buttons it costs and how much time it's going to take you. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, you're trying to fill the board. There's just simple polyomino shapes. Uh, it's just a really, really relaxing, smooth, fun game that we can play without having to – we can still talk about our day while we're playing. Yeah. We don't have to, like – you know, we're not focusing on, on the – the tension of the game. We're just placing tiles and talking and having a good time. Also, our seven-year-old schools me on this game. <laughs> just, nah, it just works with her brain, I guess. Yeah, I got, I got not on my list, I was spoiled, but uh, I think it probably would easily be like a 12 or 13. It is on my shelf. Uh, yep, yeah, literally over there. I can see it from here. You know, it, I, I think I bought it again, like I say, when I had, used to have a girlfriend, but I've still kept it because... At some point, I should really take it home and see if my dad would like it or my mum would like it, I reckon, you know, if they want two-player games. But I agree, pretty much everything on that one. It is a solid game. Yeah. And but, this is also a game that you could probably play with people who don't like games. Like, because of how easy it is to play and because the stress level is so low that if you lived with somebody who wasn't a huge gamer and you wanted to play games with them, this would probably be one of the ones that you could pull out. Yeah, just call it low stress Tetris and then people understand that <laughs> concept of just, you know, fitting puzzle pieces together or whatever. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a good one. I, I don't know if I've, I think it's kind of even Steven as to win or lose, but it's definitely a a good one although funny that we mentioned like yeah he likes tile lane and he likes farming but his first like few farming games i'm loving like up to like fields of Arl, and then since then not as much tile lane's kind of like the same thing it's like right patrick's really cool and then you might have done one or two others i think that i liked but now i'm just at that point particularly with the last two releases in each genre seriously think of something else now <laughs> i'm getting a bit sick and tired of it yeah because i didn't really latch on to the cottage garden indian summer uh I don't know, Viking Autumn or whatever they were. I was like, I forget. And, <laughs> well, he did Feast of Odin, which again, no, oh, that's in my collection as well. But it's like, he did Feast of Odin, which was Vikings. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Viking Autumn. I forget what it was called, but. I want yeah. to play a game now called. Like a Viking that. Autumn. I don't care what it's about, I'll play it. Just like, make it. <laughs> but it just. But now I didn't mostly go for those three, and then like I didn't like Halito that much. I think I gave it a six at best, and even then it's probably less than that. Uh, what was the other one? Newsford wasn't a huge fan of. But then the the Tile Lane ones have gone down the same way. Like oh, I didn't like those three. I played uh, New York Zoo. The only reason it is still in this house is because my parents liked it more than I did. I mean I didn't think it was bad, but I think Board Game Ramblings and I had kind of like the similar viewpoint, which is just meh. It's about as generic. It's it's like we've seen this a hundred times. There's nothing new here. But my parents liked it, so I was like, fine, I'll give it to you the next time I'm home. Like you can just have it. You know, fine, let them have it. You know. And by the way, my mum and dad love Splendor, so it's not good with that one. But uh, yeah, it's going. Then I mean, Alex has mentioned, uh, you know, say and yep, Borgin goes here. Uh, Nova Luna, and I have played that one. Um, in fact, the first time I played it was probably the Essen, the last Essen we were allowed to go to, and I know that uh, Johannes and Zunova and I played it as a free player. I liked it, but again, I just didn't find anything like enough to keep me back. It's like you're rinse and repeating the exact same thing. I'm starting to get a little bit tired of it now. <laughs> just a little bit. I mean, aren't you feeling that? Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, It's one of my favorite mechanics mechanisms whichever word you're supposed to use there so i i don't get tired of it but that's because mm -hmm. it's like my game style is that so obviously i'm not going to but it could be I mean, tiring i just think for that high level of a designer to make such fantastic classics and um i want to see him test himself in a way like what else can what else can you do mm -hmm. um but yeah, you said Feast for Odin, you know, combining some of those worker placement things with some of those tile laying things, and that was fun. Um, there's just, I don't know, I want to see what else he's capable of. Yeah, and as I say, it's not that they're bad games, it's just, I mean, I do love tile laying, but then 
I I don't succumb to cult of the old, um cult of the new. Sorry. So new game comes out does not instantly mean I'm going to love it. If anything, I'm probably the opposite because I will think of what has already come out and think right. Well, what do you do that this one doesn't do? And if you can show me something different, whether it's smoother or more unique in that, then great. But if you don't, then I've got no reason to prefer your game. And as I say, Baron Park sits on my shelf with the expansion. That's my go-to tile lane game for like 45 minute gateway level and patchwork if I want a two player only version. If you can't beat patchwork or Baron Park, then what exactly are you gonna expect me to do with your game? It's, I know it sounds weird, but if they're still in print, you know, I've, my, uh, sorry, I think my brother's fiance or something, you know, when I showed her what I do for a hobby, you know, she's now obsessed with getting like their kids you know, board games. They've been abusing my Zatu discount like crazy and <laughs> stuff like that to and constantly asking me, is like, what do you think of this game? Should I get this for them? And I've bought them stuff for Christmas because it's a lot easier for me to buy board games for children than it is any other type of present, believe me. But I've, I've bought them, like, the, they already had things like the Splendor and that, but Patchwork, I think I've recommended to them. I said Baron Park, I've said Love Letter. They've, they've all these, like, classic games that they're now starting to buy. And can't get enough of it. All right, number twos. I don't think this is going to be on your list, because I can't see this being your number one. But you must have played this. I can't think you've gone away. Uh, this game, probably one of my favorites to teach with those events I mentioned earlier with the dice events. You know, it takes a little bit more to teach them, a bit more rules. But for something that is literally just about 15 cards and four little action tokens, the amount of tense, in, like the, the level of tense decisions that this one makes, providing you can uh, pronounce the name of it better, which is Hanami Koji, I think, or Hanami Koji, is just stellar. This, I mean, I already mentioned Fields of Iron that this was like getting onto 10 out of 10 games for me. This is a 10 out of 10 filler two player game for me. I mean, besides looking gorgeous with these cards, the Geisha artwork, if you want to get Jixie or Academy, that's fine. You know, that's not a, you know, it's the same game. It's just replaced ladies with men. It's replacing Geisha with scholars, whatever. But with this, very simple. You've, you have got four little action tokens each. Each of you has the same blots. You lay out those Geisha at the top in the row from two to five, and that's how many points each is worth. Win by, by having influence over four of them or getting 11 points worth. So usually the high one and the low one. Each of you takes it in turn with a hand of cards, and the cards are their individual like items, like she's got the fan, she's got the umbrella, that kind of thing. It's, I mean, if you know what gay you are, you sort of get the idea. But with the idea is, is that you're trying to get influence and it's majority. So more of your more of the cards on your side, you get it. But you've got four action tokens with things like hide a card or scrap two out of the round, or I pick you choose, like I'll put down three cards, you pick one, I get the other two, and I put down two pairs, you pick a pair, I get the other pair, that kind of thing, which I always like, that's a cool mechanic. But that's it, All four, you've got those four actions, you must do all four in a round, and when you play them, is not fixed. It's not like, oh, I better should, I should do this then. Because if you play an action token uh, early, you've got less information about the state of the board, because you can see who's influencing who but you have more choice of cards but if you leave it until the last minute to play the action token you instead know more about the board state but you have less choice because your hand is dwindled so every decision of which action token you want is already tense so is the idea of the i pick you choose yeah because you could goad your opponent thinking like right well hang on i've got a bunch of these in my hand i'm gonna get the greens i'm gonna tempt him with this like really high card with a couple of low ones, and I'm hoping they'll take the high one. And of course, the opponent looks at those three cards and goes, "What are you playing? You know, so what you're trying to do?" But it's tiny little box. This is what got me onto Empress Four. I've got several of their games on the shelf, but this has been the highlight. I think they do fantastic, like small, very nice little filler games. But this one has easily been a favorite. Yeah, we had one of our, our good friends brought this over, and uh, he and I played it together. But I don't think you've ever played it. I haven't. No. Who did and you play he, it with? Like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah he, he picked it up at Gen Con or something, I think. And uh, yeah, it, you know, it's a simple majority. It's such a simple concept, but um, you're right. Every decision is is it matters. Mm. It, it's about it's just four action tokens. Like keep a card in secret, scrap two out of the round. 
I pick you choose one versus two and two pairs I pick you choose that's it both sides so it's yes there is some well it's not even luck of the draw that. but yes you might draw a card that's quite handy for you but then your opponent's doing the same one card's out of the round so there's not perfect information but you know this typically ends after about well, anywhere from one to three rounds this is a typical length for the game so it could end in the first round if it goes really well for someone but you'll usually get a time when like they've got three i've got three and then that changes the decision because it rolls over to the next round so if you've got if i've got to do like three umbrella cards exist for this geisha if you're control sorry that's the wrong word if you're influencing her then then it's harder for me to get it back off you because I've now got to win the majority. Because if you tie, nothing changes. And I just... Ugh, I've taught this to so many people. And I probably should be getting royalties from my local cafe <laughs> and store. For the amount of people at events where I have taught them this game. They've never heard of it. And then they go to that shop that's there at the time and buy a copy. It's like, I should be demanding royalties. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a good one there. I mean, you've... So you don't own this one, but you've played it at least. I played it once, yeah. Yeah. Out of that, quite a good, quite a lot of those. Uh, one bit, one that. Uh, di- What's the bit? I've, I've already mentioned that um, on an as with that one bit. Wonder and I are doing a top ten at some point of that. I said we should have done like beaut- like artwork or something because pretty much every comment <laughs> is all to do with artwork, <laughs> but instead we're doing a different topic. But yeah, it's anything about that and as i said before jixi academy hannah mccoji whatever pick up they both got the similar style artwork it's just literally a case of which one you can find and whether you want to be fighting over geisha or fighting over scholars <laughs> you know, pick it i think i think this one had a bit of bad buzz originally because of the theme of influencing geisha so i think they brought out the male version to counteract it i think that was the idea because they could have simply just reprinted this but i think there was a specific bit of a like Oh, okay. All right. Maybe we'll we'll give two copy two versions and then we can vary it. But all right. Number ones. Has anybody guessed them yet? <laughs> Any more crossover? We'll have to see. Surprise me. All right, this is it. Let's see if we have anything the same. We probably don't. But our number one is like the most simple two-player game. We play it the most of all the games on this list, and that would be Lost Cities. So, um, explain this game. I'm like, I can explain it <laughs> well. Yeah, you're going on an expedition, and there's... Side note, Ryan teaches us all of our games, because he's just really, really good at this. <laughs> so, he's just, like, really good at that. You go on these expeditions, yep. and, uh, you know... Bind- Lost Cities? <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to guess, sorry. I won't do it out loud. Carry on. <laughs> The, uh, the expeditions that you're going on, uh, when you, if you don't start an expedition, it's it's free. It doesn't cost anything. But by starting an expedition, you know you basically are having to pay up. You have a down payment of, of twenty we'll call it points. You're negative twenty points just by starting an expedition. Yeah. So you need to, if you're going to commit to going on one of these expeditions, get that twenty points plus find some way to get a surplus as well. And there's multipliers, and those multipliers again can multiply a negative number as well. So you might be looking at a situation where you are. Uh, negative 40 or yeah. negative 60 or whatever it is because you uh, you thought you were going to get some cards and then they never never panned out. And then Lost City is also played over, is it three rounds? Three rounds. Three rounds, yeah. So you add up, the, add up the points at the end of each round uh, to see who the winner is. Um, and yeah, so you're going on the expedition and one's, you know, one's to a lava place, one's to like an ice place, one's to... Um, and there's an expansion that adds just one more. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a promo expansion yeah. kind of a thing that adds like an alien thing. So there's a sixth, a sixth expedition. Um, it's incredibly simple. Uh, it's another one we taught our kids or our seven year old specifically. Um, really, really simple. But at the same time, it's mm. uh, it's that risk versus a reward. Yes. Do you start that expedition or do you not? And then every time you um, play, you have to discard a card. And so sometimes, based like when the game is progressing, you know that you could be discarding something that the your opponent needs. And so there's just that stress about what do I get rid of? Where do I put it? Am I trying to just cover something up? Or am I going to help myself? Or am I just going to hurt the other person? That's just how I play. But um, so it's like really... I don't know. It's just really only two, three choices, but just so much there in those little amount of choices. 
I, I mean, I feel bad that I blurted it out because the second you said Expeditions, that was the first game that popped into my mind and I didn't realise I was all right on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, as soon as you said Expeditions, I thought, that's got to be Lost Cities, even though you're trying to explain it thematically. There is nothing thematic about this game <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> uh, this, ah, oh, I can't remember. I didn't do a shortlist beyond... 10 like i don't know exact positions but this made the shortlist and this was probably one of those contenders it's like oh could this make number 10 could it make number 10 because this one i do like and i still own this one and i think i've with like last girl i think we did play this one a lot like i think she, this was one of the ones that she latched on to possibly to the point of like, okay seriously you're gonna burn me out in this game if we play this anymore <laughs> but <laughs> but I agree, that, that Ted Slater, I've got this hand of cards, I can see you're gunning for reds, I've got some reds, you know what, I'll hang on to these for a bit. Oh, yeah. that doesn't leave me with a lot of choices, and I, I need to play a card, but I don't want to play the red. Don't, please, don't let me play the red. And the most, inf this is one of the most infuriating two <laughs> games I think I've played, because you always get this every single game, is I, I'm, I'm collecting the greens, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, okay, six, yep, cool. That seven's got to be around there somewhere. I've got the eight. I don't want to play it. I want to wait for the seven. Yeah. Uh, too late. Fine. You play the eight, you draw the seven. Fine. <laughs> so, and then you flip the table. It's like, ah, that is so infuriating when that happens. And then towards and, the end of the game, oftentimes you're just drawing from the middle, even if you don't need it, just because like you're afraid to draw from the main draw pile because you don't want it to end yet because there's just a few more things that you want to do. Just try to make it go a little bit longer. <laughs> but then you don't have any new stuff to work with. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just mad on that. Uh, apparently you said, lo did you say Lost Cities when you first started talking? I didn't think you did. <laughs> apparently I didn't do a spoiler, but I pretty much said it instantly. I don't think you said Lost Cities like <laughs> as soon as you started. Because <laughs> as soon as you said that, I thought, I got it right, didn't I? Ah, you know, like... <laughs> um, interesting thing, have you played the board game? I have not played the board game. I have played Lost Cities Rivals, which is like a... Uh, a variation of this uh, where there's can play up to four players and there is uh, I want to say multiples of some of the cards and I honestly did not like it as much um, it didn't have nearly the tension it didn't have the um, hmm. appeal that just the simple two player one had uh, but I have not yet played the actual Lost Cities the board game all right. Uh, I mean, I've, I've heard of Rivals, but I just do not remember it getting any buzz whatsoever. It was I mean, I, you were trying to replace Lost Cities, which already did it well enough. I don't see why it needed variants. Although this one, I mean, Lost Cities, the board game is just a re-implementation of Celtis. And I have played Celtis. It's fine. I mean, it's typical Kiditsia fair in a sense. I mean, the whole game is literally play the cards, level up on a bunch of tracks get points i mean this is could it's your fuel all around but i sort of i played Kelly. i thought it was fine i, I wouldn't I, I don't see how this links as well to lost cities and that but again you've got that card game why would you need a different one i don't see it and yeah there is an app uh pascal's mentioned about an app yeah there is a lost cities app i believe i can't remember if you can play against an ai or not uh but maybe so but yeah it's definitely a good one Right, uh, well, to make up for the fact that I think I spoiled yours by blurting it out because I get into that guessing thing, I've all, you've already mentioned my number one. And okay. I tried to keep... I mean, I think this will probably be the only the second crossover we've had. Because I know we... Did we cross over on one earlier? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I don't think we... No, we've only done one crossover. That is... Probably quite surprising, actually. I thought we'd have more, but no. The one crossover, I tried to keep it fairly stum <laughs> when you were saying, like, it's like, oh, you like this one as well, don't you, Luke? It's like, uh, um, just a bit. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> yeah, not much to say of that. Yeah, 10. I mean, uh, this was what Seven Wonders 2 player was meant to to be it has been a top 10 game for me like proper top 10 out of top 100 for a while but it will still be there next year i don't know but still we're talking like top 20 who cares it's it, your top 100 too isn't it i think so yeah uh but it's as i say we, we've already kind of talked about it to death it that drafting mechanism worked well for me and i already loved it from the first game probably wouldn't be as high as it is in my top 100 if it wasn't for pantheon so you know, for those who don't know what Pantheon is, I mean, that's probably something that's good to chat about in a sense. 
basically i think the only reason i didn't give it a 10 is just because it's i wouldn't teach it to new players that's yeah. the only thing it's a little bit complicated but for that but this pantheon basically is what takes seven wonders duel to the next level because two things firstly it's already fun to use these god cards with a special ability that you pay money for you know that's already fun in itself but what this does is that it allows you to change the order of play which was something that sometimes could hurt you in the first game. You you knew it was back and forth, back and forth, so you could get your opponent in a state where you could goad them into going, right, well, you're taking that card, so I can get this one, which means you must take that one, so I get this cool one. That's all fine. That's part of the strategy, but that can feel a little bit annoying at times. This one, though, you can decide, right, well, I'm not going to take a card. I'm going to spend money and use, like, Hades over here. Use their god power. I do it. I get something cool. Now it's your turn. And if they can't afford to use a god power, they've got to start taking cards. And it's just, that is what elevated it. Mm -hmm. Just the idea of sort of like, I really don't want to take that card because it's revealing those. Hades, right? Your <laughs> turn. Take the card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we ever play this without Pantheon. We would, yeah. we would only play it with it. Yeah, it, it, I mean, this is the thing. The only reason it doesn't get a 10 for me is just because I can't see myself teaching it to a new player. I would want to teach them it because, you know, it's like, well, yeah, brilliant game with it. But just that little bit of extra complication, I don't know. Maybe if they were a diehard Seven Wonders fan, I might consider teaching them with this. But it's quite a little bit extra to consider. I don't know. I mean, would you teach it or would you just play it between the two of you? Uh, yeah, no, I might scale it back if I was teaching a new player. But if I'm playing, if I want to play with a seasoned gamer and they don't know it at all, I think I, I feel comfortable teaching them yeah. the Pantheon with it. I mean, when we teach people, I say we, but when Ryan teaches people um, Seven Wonders, we add so many of the expansions. We'll put leaders in, or, or uh, yeah, um, we, we'll put in um, cities. Stuff. Yeah, and that seems to you know, as long as you introduce it correctly, I think it's okay. Um, it's a lot of symbols to throw at somebody, but if they are generally if they're if they're, if they're a gamer yeah. and they're they're mm. they're not averse to all the symbology, then uh, yeah, I think I think give, give them Pantheon, see what, see if they can handle it. <laughs> it's not bad. I mean, I, I don't think I've taught many gamers it, so I suppose that's the only thing. And yeah. but the this one's like come up a lot because it's used a lot in I don't like tournament play, but we did have a friendly one at uh, one of my local game clubs where we did one of those like play a bunch of games and then top seven play this game and then top two play this game and it was like i mean i got the trophy it's like whatever it's like it was a bit of fun but you know we'd started off with things like kina tokyo which didn't work very well but like dominion and alhambra and a few of those seven wonders was then the seven top seven to play in seven base set seven wonders top two went through just scraped second place <laughs> it was like that was close but then seven wonders duel was the final and this was against a friend of mine who also loves Seven Wonders Duel. So this was down to the wire, third age, grab the science victory, mine. You know, so, but <laughs> it was it was close. I mean, it had to go my way. Otherwise, it would have gone to points. And I don't think I would have won it on there. But yeah, this one makes for a great, like, right, final two players. Play this. Um, have you played the print and play of the solo mode? Mm -mm. I didn't know there was one. Um, Asmodee have done it. Someone mentioned uh, uh, who mentioned it. Uh, they deserve a little shout. Someone said it. Uh, Vice Girl said it, and I'm sure someone else did as well. But uh, basically, it's mainly the main reason I can still hang on to it because I can't play it two player often. But I can now play the solo, and I think I have done a playthrough on this channel for it, so you can watch that. But Asmodee basically released this official print and play thing. And I know print and play is something I normally hate as well, but we're talking like a few cards. It really isn't, except whatever conditions you want. <laughs> Take my money. Um, but this, oh, it's not, ah, it doesn't load up in the thing. That's not going to, all right, all right, that's not going to work. It's, it's, it won't load it up in the screen. But basically with this, the solo mode basically, I'm trying to find, uh, it's because it's loaded up in another tab. That's why I wonder if I can find. I'll try. Oh, I don't know. I'll try and find it if I can find it. I will. But basically, it puts you up against an AI that has a small deck. I mean, I think you print about ten cards max or something, if that. And it just basically has icons for what card they will take. Each one has their own 
like little ability and color that they love going for yellow blue red whatever um usually yellow and blue and the rest but they always try and grab red and green as well just in different priorities and so you would flip a card and it will say right from the left or the right go for firstly red if not green if not their own color and so that's all you got to do flip a card see which one they take they take it they don't pay for resources they don't have money they don't have any of that it's just them taking cards but because they can just you know they easily can take the cards you want and they're just piling up these cards they can get quite a lot of points it can be quite tough in fact there's a you've got a different leader like Cleopatra and a few of these others and I there's two in particular I can't remember their names but they are stupidly hard <laughs> like they are hard to beat but this this is one reason it's like gone up even higher because now I can play the solo that sounds pretty great though I mean I'm not a huge solo gamer but that's the kind of the kind of thing that I would the really simple AI like that just like take a card that's the kind of so, solo games that I do get interested in as I say, I'm trying to find more more things that will work with it, but I can't find an easy one out of that. You'll just have to go watch my video. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's the only way you'll find out more. But it just it, it opens it up as kind of like a window, so it won't actually show up on the stream. But uh, nah, this is all good. Right. Whew. Let's see. Tw that was literally only one crossover. I thought that would be this more. <laughs> 19 games and 19 very different games. I mean, we, I think we covered a, a, like, a different spectrum all the way around there. And certainly, I mean, I, have, I thought there was going to be more kiddie games on your list, but then I guess I don't know many kid two-player only games. I mean, do any exist? Do you have any? I think that most of our kids' games are two to four. Yeah. And, you know, our seven-year-old is starting to get to be able to play some of these kind of family or weight games, the patchworks of, in the Lost Cities, those kinds of things. Our seven-year-old is able to play now, which is great. Um, I think most most kids' games seem to be designed for two to four. I can't think of any that our youngest plays that would be just two. two. Yeah. Oh, for that, uh, try to get... I mean, some of these other ones that people do mention, like Watergate and I think there was a Blitzkrieg and a couple of others, and I, I just never played them. It was hard enough to play any games in 2020 and certainly like last half of 2019 and two player games would have suffered even more. Like I would Watergate have never played them. Loved. Yeah. Watergate was on my top 10. I hadn't my, played my, it though. Yeah. So can it put it on our Really list? good. Yeah. Twilight yeah. Struggle is another one of those you know, heavier, uh, longer two player games. That, what was that social deduction that you played with, Blake? Oh, Inhuman Conditions. That's yeah. a fantastically weird two player mm -hmm. social deduction game. Two player social deduction. I mean, that seems it's in, it's insane. Yeah, but one but really there's like a it, future yeah. society where there's robots and androids have infiltrated uh, society, and you're trying to interview them, trying to figure out whether or not they are a robot or not. And so the robots trying to cover up whether what they are. They're trying to pretend that they're human, whether they are human or not. And the uh, interviewers trying to figure out what they are. And it's just this weird thing and there's all these sub rules it's it's insane i have no idea how how they how that it. works yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i'll mention quick before going on there's a quick honorable mentions there they mentioned that is there anything fun at all in the agora expansion i did a podcast where i spoke about it in a bit more detail but it's not that the agora expansion is bad if you want to get if you don't have pantheon and you get agora it's still got some fun stuff in it although i do think the senate board that you have with some of the cards can be a little bit on the swingy side but the problem is, is that if you put both expansions in, it just makes it too complex for my liking. It's like, bye, I got to teach you a lot of stuff and there's a lot going on when you put both of them together. It's not that it's bad, it's just it's above a level I don't want it to be. But then if you decide, right, well, maybe I'll just get one expansion, why would you not get Pantheon? <laughs> I would never rate Agora above Pantheon, therefore no use for it. So that's that's the only thing. I, it's not that it's bad, it's just just not... It's It's trying to take down a Titan and I don't think it can. So not on there. Um, Plus we have a custom insert and it wouldn't fit in that custom insert. So therefore, no, yeah, you, <laughs> that's it. I've got the same. Yeah, it won't, it won't fit in there. So uh, just a kind of, I don't want to mention that I can think of. I and mean, we already mentioned like patchwork and lost cities was on there as well. I'm trying to think of what else I had. That was right. Thing. Um, very, do you have any others? The one that I really, really, really like, but Ryan is just not a fan of is Katana. And it's just a two-player dueling game where you have um, your your cards are set up in a different way, and you're trying to basically defeat the cards that are in front of the other person based on how you can play 
the cards that you have and i absolutely loved it aesthetically it was very pleasing for me so that that's half of the draw for it for me but i really really liked this mm. game yeah i just loaded up my, my google drive list because i got them all on there now and yeah there was quite a few honorable mentions like, like tack great little abstract game just camisado and that uh more than it um trying to think actually did i miss out one on my list no i didn't miss one out nine ten nine eight now, for a minute, I, I thought I'd missed one out, but no, thankfully I hadn't or something. But uh, Yinch, you mentioned Yinch before. That one was like probably, that could have been like the 11 or something. It's like I slightly prefer these other abstracts mainly because I think the strategy in Yinch is hard for some people to get around. But again, probably the best of all that gift series. Uh, Jaipur. Uh, oh, Jaipur is a great game. I'm just slightly burning out on it mainly because... A, it gets taught a lot, and B, my dad now loves it. So it's like he's latched onto it. So we played a lot of games over the last Christmas of it. And I'm kind of like, do you want to play some more Jaipur? And it's like, sure. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I, well, actually, I don't know. He's won it. A, he, he wins rounds. He doesn't win the entire game, but he wins rounds. He's like, he still has a little bit to learn. But, you know, it's kind of like, I'll happily go back to Ticket to Ride because that's what his other love. Uh, Imhotep the Jewel considered um i like imhotep the dual version was pretty sweet so putting the meeples down and getting stuff off the boats lost cities was there kahuna was tempting that was although actually in our short list too yeah kahuna i don't know i like it it's very strategic i suck at it but i, I think it just couldn't make it. i think it would probably be like high teens but it was still something there uh was there any others already mentioned pack where code names do it was a yeah that was another honorable mention and hive that was the other one. Yeah, the... Hive was another one we thought about. The only issue that I have with Hive is it's kind of um, really lends itself to the player who's played it the most. And so Ryan had played it on his phone for years before he taught it <laughs> to me. So it was, it was just impossible to play competitively. I could probably play it with our eldest and we could play competitively. She'd probably beat me anyway. But it's just one of those games that if somebody's played it over and over and over again and then you teach it to them, it's just there's no way. Can't that. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those. Like I say, I like it. I just have not played it in ages. Uh, Haven, a series ago, I get that to the table and try it. Fox in the Forest, you, I, I put that down as a want to talk about one, but thankfully you already had it on your list. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to try that game. Another one is that Z Garcia mentions Caper um, a lot. I have not played it. I've heard of it. I think it's like a two player drafting game, but I, by the sound of it, I want to play it. You know. And I'm just looking through the comments that we got here. Trick shot, Super Fantasy Brawl. Yeah, I, I didn't latch onto Super Fantasy Brawl as much as I would have liked. Uh, Roma Arena, that's Stefan Feld, so you can guarantee that won't make my cut. You can know that for a fact. Battle Law Second Edition, pretty good little fantasy game. I just it just a bit big and grandiose. I, I've already got Star Wars Rebellion. I don't need another one of those sort of things. Mister Jack, none of us mentioned that one. No one played yeah, that one. Never played it. No. Did ditto on that front. I mean, it sounds like something I would like. I've just not played it. Is it like and, a Scotland Yard, like two player kind of a thing, or what? As far as I'm aware, Mr. Jack was like a two player deduction game where, like, one per, like, Mr. Jack is trying to stay hidden. There's these different characters with roles. And I forget, it's like a grid thing, like, you know, is he in this column? Is he in this row? I know very little about it, but uh, it it's popular. It shows up at Essen. It gets played a lot on there, and apparently it's good. Just never played it. <laughs> Keep an eye out for it. Yeah, it's it's one of those if you like two player head to head deduction. That's kind of what the game's for. <laughs> That's how it works. Uh one by one just mentioned uh was it two player yeah, multiplayer games best for two. I did a list for that about a year or two ago, so there is a list for that. And I specifically said before I said, Do you want to do this two player list? Can we cap it at two player only? Because the problem is if we did this as multiplayer games best with two i'd have a hundred games to pick from because too many games are good like best with two whether it's just because usually just because they take less time yeah, yeah. and that's the majority of the games that we play yeah you know, almost everything just, you know <laughs> yeah. plays two as an option and yeah. <laughs> yeah and usually just because it's like well it feels like a free and four player game but instead of taking two hours it takes me an hour well then two player is technically better <laughs> you know not that i I've already done that list. I don't think it would change that much, but even then there'd just be far too much choice. I just think these like 
two player only ones having that caveat with the slight you know tweak with things like fields of Ireland and stuff like that i think just kind of worked well because i mean things like azul would be like an example of like a multiplayer game that i think's best with two yeah and but That'd be fun again list, though. We haven't I, done that. We should probably try that sometime. Yeah. Give it a go yourselves. I think mine's too recent in the sense of, oh, I'm not going to waste time searching it now, but uh, I think it's about a couple of years old, so it's still pretty relevant. But uh, yeah, that's something, that's homework for you two. <laughs> <laughs> Make one and then we can complete the list in that. So yeah, you gather those. So thanks for everyone joining in. We're just going to sign off and reflect because like I say, I thought we were going to keep this short, but to be honest, I think I'm just giving up on that now. Because <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> My top 10 streams will not be short because I like talking far too much. <laughs> That's the way it is. Well, yeah, thanks so much for having us on. This was a ton of fun. <laughs> nah, there'll be more. Like I say, I'm doing these like collaboration things which are like really good and it's not like all right you're on once that's it no we'll rinse repeat all it takes is people have just got to come up to me with a decent topic. You know, sometimes I'll chase people and say, look, this top 10 might work like a I've got board game perspective that'll probably be next week live i'm doing um yeah we got a live session booked in and then we're doing the top 10 beautiful games for that one like the artworky one but then board game perspective has justin who does like the instagram channel and their photos are like gorgeous like absolutely gorgeous so it's kind of like all right that fits and with you two player games it fits so i'm trying to get i'm trying to sort of think right well which list do i need help with then cool i bring in like this one i needed help you know <laughs> I'm not the best person to talk about two player games. Therefore, you know, if, if people are kind of bored hearing the same stuff on my 10, then your 10 had some very different stuff that even I wasn't expecting. I think if I tried to guess your list, I probably wouldn't have got more than two or three of them. <laughs> <laughs> that was good though. I mean, that's what the good thing about our hobbies is just so, so much many. good stuff out there. Then so there's something funny. for everybody. It works and that. So yeah, thanks everybody. Everybody's already sending all their goodbyes and that are going to sign off. So, Take care. This is Ryan and Bethany from Ryan and Bethany Board Games. When I get around to editing this shortly after, don't worry, check out the link in the description. You can find their channel there. Go watch their previous two player list, see if it's changed much. Did it change much? Yeah, because yeah. the scope of it changed, I think. Yeah. But yeah. so, yeah, there's some of these show up, but there's, it's, it's different, very different. Fair enough. Like I said, go check out their channel, hashtag support small creators. I will drum it into everybody I can if I have to. So, take care. That's it for me. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Good night. <laughs>